It's Monday, July 5th. Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happened Now is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Listen to me. During this time of change, we want you to know that Zip Recruiter's focus hasn't changed. They're still doing what they've always done, helping people find work. And they're helping businesses find the right people for the job. If you're looking for a job, Zip Recruiter is working with you to find the right job faster. You understand me? By connecting people who need jobs and companies that need people. Zip Recruiter is working with all of us so we can keep moving forward. Now let's work together. Do me a favor. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work together and get started today, right now. Who else does that for you? Nobody. Go to CBDLine.com right now. Press in. Church. Get this fucking party started, Lee. It's Monday the 5th, motherfucker. Oh, shit. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. Oh, shit. Here you go. Monday morning. It's a beautiful motherfucking day to be alive. Shit's crack a lacking. Had a great weekend this weekend. Everything's beautiful. Happy 4th of July. We didn't get to see each other on Friday or talk, but I hope you, you all you motherfuckers had a happy 4th. Hopefully you got all your fingers. I know a lot of motherfuckers are walking around with eight fingers today in the story. You know what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers walking around with eight fingers. A couple guys are just elbowing it to death right now today. The fuse went too fast. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. i seen fingers flying. No biggie. No biggie. You'll be all right in about a year. By next 4th of July, you'll learn a new fucking drill. You'll learn how to, you'll learn how to throw it with the hook. You know what I'm saying? And you'll be fine. The hook always works. The, uh. the firecracker goes farther when you use a hook. <laughs> Josh Wolf, what did you see that the other night? Did you see the aerial footage of LA? Yeah. Like next time, just fucking tell people. Like, yeah, you can't make dick illegal now. Not right now. No, people are gonna blow up. There were bombs going off by my house. I woke up this morning. It was a leg. In front of a little Iraqi leg in front of my house. I just, they, uh, I just threw it in the fucking garbage. There was there were more fireworks in my neighborhood. But like not like like pop pop. Like oh legitimate God. fireworks. I was in my office. I thought a bomb went off. I went and yeah. checked on my family. I'm like, you guys are all right. I will tell you though, July fifth is the best day. Today was the best fucking day to go on YouTube because all you see is drunk people fighting at barbecues. People holding on to firecracker for too long, and white dudes firing firecrackers out of their asshole. It's the fucking best day to be on YouTube. You see more dudes with bottle rockets propped up on a fucking <laughs> chair. Yeah, today was the day to be on YouTube. You know what else today? Last week, I did a podcast. You ready for this one? About how it was my wife's and I 20th anniversary last Wednesday. But you know what's also what this week is? It's our 25th anniversary. We met July oh my God. 2nd, 1995, this weekend in Seattle. In fact, it was the same setup because we did have an open mic Monday. The 4th of July was Saturday. Oh and I went God. down to the underground. I looked in the window. I'm like, oh, my God. I rubbed the brick. I'm like, I'm finally here Yeah, at the underground and shit. And then we had an open mic Monday. You came in with your hat, and I jumped right on your dog. What's up with the Boston hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surrounded with all these people with yarmulkes on. <laughs> whatever the fuck. <laughs> but it's 25 fucking years. I know you now. Holy shit. I didn't want you to feel old, but fuck it. Yeah, my fucking God. 25, 25 years. years. You came in on a Monday. You got to go back to Lobo Loco. Yeah. And then I think we finally, Tuesday, you hung out. It's yeah. Tuesday you can hang out. That is crazy. 25 years this week. I had no idea it was this there. week. Yeah, I got there like July. I did the triple How run. How soon, when you got there, how soon did you make it down to the underground? Like how long had you been in Seattle? You got there and did you the triple the run? Truth? You yeah. want the truth? Yeah. I did the triple run on a Saturday night. It had to be, I was in LaGrange, Oregon. With Carol? No, I was alone. See how far it is from LaGrange, Oregon, 
to Seattle, Washington. So you were you were by yourself. I was by myself. My deal was to do a triple run to lead me to it, Seattle to drop me off a few hours from Seattle. Who do you have any? Do you remember at all who you were doing that run with? Some shitty fuck. Oh no, no, I don't remember his name, but he was a really, really, really good guy. As a matter of fact, he lived in like Laguna Beach. It's about 325 miles. So 325 miles divided by 70 miles an hour is what? Five hours. Five hours? I think I did it in like three hours. Because she was getting out of work at the strip club at two. And I beat her to her apartment. She left me a key under the mat. Yeah. And I went in and she came home from the strip club. So that was a Saturday night at two. Yeah. I was at the underground the next day by lunchtime at attention. Yeah, man. You understand me? Yep. Like I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. She was talking about going to pick pick with Pike's Market. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, like, go fuck your mother in the ass. <laughs> Let's go see the underground yeah. first. So we took like a fucking cab down to the underground. It was closed. It was lunchtime. I was like, fuck, and I rubbed the brick. I could tell that there was a bar. Like I was like, the bar upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, the yeah. fuck is this? This is not what was told. And how me. how had you heard about the open mic on Monday? Did you ask somebody at Swanee's? Because there wasn't like an internet. You were looking at it. It was closed that Saturday. Yeah. And it was closed that Sunday for the 4th of July weekend. Got it. So I called like Monday and Ron Reed called back. And he's like, oh, tonight's the open mic. Because I, oh, Rick Kearns gave me the, the, the. Do you remember? Rick Kearns gave me the. He goes, when you go up there, tell Ron Reed you're a friend of mine. Tell Fox you're a friend of mine. So I told, called Ron Reed. And Ron Reed just said, go down to the thing and sign up. Carl was there. Uh, the best. He put me up like number one because they always put you up first. Uh, the first night you went. Yeah. You went up first. <laughs> Whoever hosted got 50 bucks. Yep. 50 bucks. How much is 50 bucks back then? A you? lot. When you host on a Monday and you got 50 bucks. Come on, man. And then my girl. Had the contest in Tacoma. Oh, yeah. Susan Jones. Yeah. The, the, the fucking thing in Tacoma. Yeah. That's how we made a living. Mondays. Mondays was our big living. Yep. If you won the contest, you won a yardstick, and you'd come back the following Monday and host. But also, you know what else you uh, uh, we did a bunch up there was we would find... We would find one-nighters that we knew weren't going to last... But for like two or three months, you got a paycheck to host or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we 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 must have. I personally must have started and failed fifteen rooms at least, 15 right? Rooms. I mean, so fucking rooms. many, they, so many. They lose, but like I still remember you taking me to an under. Uh, we used to do. It was pretty much the same shit. Monday, Tuesday was the underground. Yep. Wednesday was a Laura Crocker gig, one of those gigs. Mm-hmm. Thursday, we crashed somebody's. Well, no. Wednesday, we still had the underground because Wednesdays, it was still somebody's night. Yep. So if Lee Syatt had a night, sorry, Lee, we're coming down. Yeah. We're coming down. We did a lot of people's you know, nights yeah. on Wednesday. We're coming down on Wednesday night. Did Don't you, worry about nothing. Did any of those guys let you tour with them up there? Who tour, Who took you out on the road? Vince Valenzuela. So I got there on a Monday, all right? Yeah. I got there on a Saturday. This is how I tell people. Like, I tell people, like, listen, when you're dealing with me, you're dealing with the wrong guy. Like, when you, if you come to me and tell me your story, you're dealing with the wrong guy because you're not going to stop me. Yeah. So I got there on a Saturday at 2 in the morning. I was at the underground at 12 the next day, which is the Lord's Day, and it was closed. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah. You want to talk about love for comedy. And then I was back there Monday. The open mic started at 8. I was there at seven at attention, like a fucking, like I was about to go on in Madison Square Garden. I went up there and he told me, come back tomorrow night. Then I came back the next night. And then Wednesday, somebody turned me on to something somewhere in Ballard. Yeah, Wednesdays were were also the pizza. Those were the nights that we would find a place just to fucking, if you give us 150 bucks. We'll put up 15 comics, or we'll put up four comics, whatever we can put and together. And then, you ready for this? That Thursday, I already got a call. I'm going to remind you of another story that you're going to, so all these people at home could remember. 
That Thursday, I already had a call from John Fox. You're working Friday and Saturday in in Idaho at that at Moscow, Moscow, Idaho. And you know who the headliner was? Wait, Vince Valenzuela. Get out! And he treated me like a gentleman. He was so a good dude. Day, he's a good good dude. dude. He's on Facebook. Yeah. I, t- you, I sent him a message a while ago. He didn't hit me back, so I don't know if he does comedy anymore. He does. He does. He's a great. He's a brother to me. He's super nice guy. You did that for you did that gig for fifty bucks. Well, seventy five bucks, and he mailed you a check. Yeah. a month later. <laughs> a month that fucking was later. The worst. Yeah, you had to drive back from there, <laughs> hung over as fuck, because they would send you a prairie farts. Yeah, which is tequila with Tabasco <laughs> sauce in them. Yeah, um, I remember still seeing the New England Patriot quarterback at the airport, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Yeah, he went to that school. Washington State. Washington State. So it was fucking crazy. Because was- because Moscow is right across the line from Washington. So Washington State. And and what's in Moscow is what University of Idaho maybe something like that, but so they're right next to each other. So yeah, those Washington State guys so came. So I got all the work time. before the first week. I already featured for Vince Valens well. I'm like trying. I drove home on fucking Saturday, going like, wow. Now like, it's that easy. Like I just came up here, yeah, and bit slap motherfuckers into a first week of work. That's fucking crazy. Okay. Then me and him were eating lunch. I was eating free lunch at his bar one day. About three or four weeks later, I'm I'm eating fucking the chicken mole that was tremendous. Oh, that place. dude made the best the chicken, chicken mole. Who the fuck Holy you think you're dealing with? Shit. And I would just leave him a and, tip. And his, was, and his and his he would give me like a check, and I would yo, just push it away. Like, and his brother with the fake eye because he got stabbed in it. Yeah. I'll yeah. Not, <laughs> You can't write Those this shit. dude made some you can't great write this fucking shit. food. I'm up there yeah. with him. Do you still remember when Homeboy walked in and started a fight with me? Which you don't guy? remember that fight that, that that day. Because I went up there with fucking roller skates on. Like, I was in no mood. I just came from Denver. I, where we, oh, no, 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 no. no. You, you still remember yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. I just came from fucking Denver where there's no action. Where I would drive to fucking Wyoming to do an open mic. You got yep. the wrong motherfucker. You got the wrong guy. I would drive to Wyoming on Thursday nights to do an open mic. So stop with your bullshit. So right after that, I fucking went on a tear. Because then Alberto gave me work the oh, following shit. week. The yeah. Cuban guy yep, yep. at the old improv. The improv had closed in Seattle. That was right across from Pike's Right Pikes. across from Pike's Market. Yep. And then we were going to bar downstairs across the street. Oh, fuck. Come on, who the fuck you think you did? That was with? the old improv theater, I think. The club was the improv theater. Out there, that's where Steve McGrew got. Yeah, mugged. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a theater. That was the improv. Across the street from Pike's Peak is Deja Vu. Oh, yeah. It 50 is. ugly girls <laughs> and one fat one. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then across the street from that is Pike's Market in those days. Yeah. And across the street from Pike's Market on the side was a little bar we used to go to on the side. You could sneak in. It was a white people bar. But Rod Long oh, used yeah. to take us. Yeah. Rod Long used to take us. Was a light-skinned brother married to a white chick. Good dude, Rod Long. Good dude. Long. I just talked to him a couple weeks ago. So really we always, good dude. Every time I see him, I, showed, I call my wife. my, I call him Zombo. But I call my daughter Zombo. But he was day. he was like, good to Zombo? you up there, too. Rod Long was he my was brother. He was really that good That was one of the headliners. Yeah, like, man. He was he, good He to was you. like Rogan. Yeah. He was like, bring it, bitch. Yeah, he you was know? good to you. He was like, bring it. You're going to go up there and throw heat? Bring it, because yeah. I want to follow you. He was a really solid guy. I still leave him messages. Eddie, what do you think of him? <laughs> and he'll call me back, Joe Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, Joe Diaz? <laughs> yeah, man, he was a good guy. I, who who was so the first person? He that, used to have an Altoid can yeah. filled with the best weed Yeah, that was grown in the He Seattle. had good weed. Every time he'd show up, and he treated it like a fucking, like a pot of gold. It was an Altoid can that he'd fill up with weed that was just, I remember trying to steal a bud from him one time. He's like, Joe Diaz, don't think about it. Because we drove to L.A. one time. We drove here together. You did? Me and him. When? We stayed. How fucking crazy is Wait, what, what year was that? He drove me down for the Latino Laugh Festival Showcase. When you want to talk about a lucky dude, motherfuckers. Okay, I just mentioned it to him. Mm-hmm. I just go, I got to come up with money for this festival. I got to go to L.A. and showcase. And he goes, I got to go to L.A. next week. Set it up the next week. And I set it up, and he had a break because he was an artist. Yeah. He used to take pictures a photographer. on the road. Yeah. 
he would take pictures on the road. He loved going on the road because his thing was to take pictures. And then he'd come home and fill it in with paint. And he would sell them. He had like a big fucking market for those. This is before the internet. Mm -hmm. I fucking, like, he was like a mentor to me. Like, he used to tell me how to act, how to crack jokes. He was a great writer. He had a bit. Do you remember his opening joke that he would do almost everywhere? He would say, I was, because Bellevue was a super white place. And um, he would always say, I was over in Bellevue today at the mall. And I could hear the security guy behind me go, um, I'm going to need some help. There's a black guy here who's clearly not big enough to be a Seahawk or a Sonic. <laughs> that was his. He used to, oh, wherever he was, something. I, I butchered that joke if he's listening. One Sunday but night. But that he used to. <laughs> I, I love to laugh at comedians. I love when a comic fucking just throws me off. Sunday nights were shit nights there, especially after football. Or Mariner game. Yeah. The upstairs would be packed. And yeah. I mean, ask him. We would have the Seahawks upstairs. We would have the man. I Yo, mean, when I the Yankees were in town. The Yankees. Oh. I still remember hanging with Christian Fourier. Yeah. Who became a New England Patriot yeah, later. Yeah, man. When he was a Seahawk. But he. Because I knew him from Boulder. Dude, that I knew dude. him from Boulder, him and Chad Brown. Yeah. we. I remember going upstairs and seeing him and him going, what the fuck yeah. are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. You're here. He's like, I got drafted by dude, Seattle. He used to like, be that's out. That's the bar we were at. He was out all the time. Every though. night. He every fucking night. I got a snot coming out of my nose. It's terrible. A loose hair or some shit. But those were the people that hung out upstairs. Yeah. Eddie Vedder was up there one night with uh, McDowell. Jack McDowell. Jack McDowell. I mean, it was just a party. And up some there. of them used to get behind the bar and bartend. And bartend, the Filipino bartender <laughs> who hated me. And so he I gave did? him some Coke one night and then he went off. Uh, After that, he started liking me. He started giving me a tab and he started taking care of me that way. What was the name? Wow, well, I man. Billy. Do you, Billy. Yo, you could we hear some, Billy we laugh. Had some good people down there. In we, that kitchen. Dog, it was like. Do you remember the weekend it was that um, Rick Kearns were in, was in town and it was me, you, and Rick Kearns? And so Friday night, Rick does two shows. We all do two shows together. And he crushes. And I come down Saturday and I sit in the green room. He was like, I haven't met you before. I'm Rick. I'm like, I opened for you last night. And he goes, yeah, I don't remember last night. <laughs> so I still remember me and Josh opening up for the black dude that rented the Jaguar and took us to the strip club. And gave us James money. Stevens the third. James Stevens the third. Talk. This he is how was bad we the go. best. He took me oh. and Josh open for him. Me and Josh. He was the best. Just macked onto oh, his show. We just macked God. onto his show. He was on the Stephanie Miller show. Oh. And when he heard he, he was, was coming a good up to dude. Town, yeah. Me and Josh were like, we're, we're in there. Like, this we, is a, we were like a tag <laughs> team. Like it's all up. We're going in there. Oh, That's James ours. Like, we, the had third, Ron, man. we had Ron Reed. So Ron Reed's wife, God rest his soul, Laura. was his manager. So we'd see Ron and go, Ron, we see that. I, mean, I still remember Louis C.K. Yeah. Coming. Like, I still remember Doug Stanhope Do you coming. remember he taped that? Um, Louis C.K.? The Stanhope taped a CD there. A CD there. I still remember hanging with Mitch Hedberg, God rest his soul. Yeah. On Monday nights. Yes. This was like a fucking He was great there club. a lot. A lot with uh, Chard, Chard Hogan. Hogan. And what was, was the Ramona? Ramona. Right? And we had the fucking, we had a transvestite that did comedy. Rita O. We had a fat black chick that was hysterical that did comedy. We had a little black guy. What was his Cliff name? Cliff Barnes. Cliff Barnes was my dog. Yeah, La dude. Lahai Frambula. We had, but Lahai's down here, yeah, man. Yeah, Lahai's down here. He yeah. just reached out a couple yeah. of weeks ago. We had this little comedy family. But one day... So I, right away, I got work from Alberto, the Cuban dude. He was kind of gay. Yeah, and we, by the way. We didn't know for sure. Also, Brody, Tana, Brody, Mark. Tana. I mean, this was like. Yeah. So now I get. So my July was pretty much Moscow, Idaho, Alberto. I picked up the volcano room. Oh, yeah. That was in the Tri-Cities. Yeah. That was like fucking big time. 375 for the weekend. What was the name of the woman Ooh, who, who Donna booked? Richards. Donna Richards. Donna Richards booked the volcano room yeah. over by Idaho. There's a city by Idaho. Spokane, something else, and something else. It's called the Tri Cities. Yeah. And it mixes. What? So we it was like a three hour drive. Rodney Sherwood. Sherwood. 
was the first guy. He was my dog. Dude, Sherwood. he was fucking Rodney funny. Rodney Sherwood took me to the volcano room. What was the name of the room you and I and Lenny Schmidt did? That was that was in Roseburg. That was Roseburg, which was death. That was where the strip club. The, the DJ, she was the MC. Yeah. She was the waitress and she was the stripper. Yeah. And then there was and then the Chinese restaurant we did was Kowloon's. Oh, That's why I sold them for the half ounce of weed. Yeah. But Kowloon's also had a restaurant in Eugene. That was off the chain. This fucking that pork fried rice. They would fry the rice and then give you huge slices of fucking barbecued pork on top of that. Fucking tremendous. Fucking tremendous. But so I'm rocking and rolling. I'm guys. I you, uh, what you ever see the Sopranos when yeah. when uh, the guy from Boardwalk Empire gets out of jail and he goes to see the old guy. Yeah, the guy that was in Scarface. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not good with me neither. names. <laughs> the, the guy from Scarface that played the white dealer yeah. that Tony kills for Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, he he's on the Sopranos. Yeah, remember he he came out of jail. And there's one scene where he gives him an envelope. And, and fucking the guy from Boardwalk Empire goes, what's this? And he goes, you just got out a week ago. And he goes, bro, I came out, I hit the ground running. Like, when you come out, you hit the ground running, you don't look back. And when I went to Seattle, like, I was like, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to become a way better comic. So I went on a tear. Like, I got everybody's phone numbers. Yeah. And from Monday to Friday, in those days on Mondays, you had a fax of veils. You had a fax of veils to Pat Wilson, oh, Donna right. Richards, Wilson. your manager, yeah. uh, John Fox. You had a, that was what you did. Not Monday at 2, not Monday at 11, not Monday at 9.30. Monday at 8.59. How, how many? I was already at the store because at nine, I was on the phone with the guy from Giggles. Uh, okay, so that was my work. What was his I, name? And I was snorting blow back then. Oh yeah. Oh, I was doing it all. I don't want to hear those <laughs> stories about. Yeah. You know. That's why I love people. Like, oh well, yeah, well, nothing's happened. No, I went to Seattle and I hit the ground running so hard in the month of July that, like, by mid-August, by already in July, I got in the underground. I was supposed to leave. I wasn't supposed to stay in Seattle. Yeah. That's what nobody doesn't know. I wasn't supposed to stay. I was supposed to be back in Colorado August 15th for football season. But John Fox called me and gave me Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend to open up for Laurie Kilmartin as a feature act at the Underground. Oh, shh. Everybody could suck my dick in those days. Yeah. When you featured at the Underground, you were a feature. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. No more MCing. Bye. Yeah. So well, I'm going to go back to Boulder and get into a fight with my ex-wife or knock out the boyfriend or go to prison. I got a feature. I just let life contradict. I did not Shh. know. There Pretty good. Go. Not I, bad. I didn't know you That's were supposed to go in August. Yeah. No, I left it in God's hands. When I went to Seattle, I put it in God's hands. I said, God, you tell me what you want me to do. I got a daughter in Boulder. They don't want me. She doesn't want me around. I'm going to end up going to jail. You let me know what you want me to do. And every weekend in Seattle, boom, Donna Richards, boom, Pat Wilson, boom, Omar, the, the, the gay guy, whatever it is, Alberto. Yeah. Uh, you know, then fucking he called me. You know, John Fox called me. He's like, what are you doing Labor Day? And I'm like, I'm going to be back in Boulder. And he goes, well, I want to offer you this weekend. And I'm like, I'm doing it. Yeah. And that was it. That was Hell it. Hell yeah. I said, where the fuck am I going to go? I was fighting for my life in Boulder. I was living in the Rocky apartment, doing f f six set spots a week, driving 22 hours a week. Here, just on Tuesday and went Monday, I got three spots. Yeah. Because then you started taking me to a place where the lip worked. The first yeah. place we met the lip... <laughs> Was at a the bar that they had cages. Lit. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had cages, and we went up. He said, "Come do comedy." Oh, there was, there was, there, were, there was birds. There was the, no, 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 no. Not there the was, bird place not across the bird the... place. This was still in Seattle. Oh, we used to have to get in the car and make, go. The street 
going into the underground came this way, yeah. we would have to make a left and go up that side street oh, yeah. and then go up a little bit. And then you went up there and it was like a cool hip bar. Yeah. You went downstairs and there was girls dancing in cages and Lilip was a nice guy. It's yeah. like if Damon, like if you had a fucking bar and you're like, <laughs> come down Tuesday. You want to do comedy? Come down. Yeah. There was no mic. There was nothing. There was no... Yeah. Like, did you uh, tell anybody why they, you called it was them the like, lip? No, no, it was me, you, and like we, we like gang sat racked the place. It but was, it was like six of Gavin us. Gavin always came with, with us. We would yeah. go up to, uh, eight bucks. Let me get six beers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's only eight dollars here. That, yep, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> You, you say it with want, confidence. Oh, you guys want mugs? No. no. <laughs> if I wanted a mug, I'd ask you for a mug. There's six of us. We're the comics, and we're doing beer. All right. <laughs> we want beer, and we got eight dollars. Talk to the owner. He'll tell you. <laughs> and then we like, look at this. Like, what the fuck are these gorillas saying? Uh, to us? Dude. So we went. You know. So the lip. <laughs> the lip. Like, like. The lip used to get these huge sores <laughs> on his lip. It was I mean, herpes. Mixed with AIDS, <laughs> mixed with like Seattle juice, they some were, grunge. I had never seen anything like that on somebody's body. <clears throat> they were these massive, and it, and and he never mentioned it. And I, nah, he just talked to you yeah. with the fucking <laughs> with the hurt about the blow in your never. face, and you accept it. <laughs> You just talk to him like if it blows up, I hope it doesn't hit me in the mouth. This dude never you know? even mentioned it. And he was good looking as fuck. Yeah, man. That's yeah. what it was. He had herpes from slinging dick. Yep. You know, he had herpes from slinging dick. And by the way, that huge thing on his lip never stopped him from picking up women. No. He would pick up things. He'd make out with them. They wouldn't even ask. He was like sweet dick Willie. They wouldn't even dude, ask. They, he, he was that good looking. Like he was. He was that good looking, yeah. guys. And he... We, I'm not, I'll never forget the first time we showed up. And he's like, all right. He's like, well, who's going up first? And we're like, are you going to turn the music on? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like fucking, like, you know, like crazy music. It wasn't like grunge or nothing. It was like white people, like make-believe white people. Like, you know, it was a lounge and shit. We're not just going to walk up there. And he's like, Yeah. Go up there. And I remember like three of us went up. All three of us ate a bag of dicks. And then we had to have a talk with him. We're like, listen, we'll come up here, but you got to set it up for us. Yeah. You can't just have us come in here. And like, you got to turn off the music. Up. You got to turn the music off. You got to let people know there's comedy. These are not comedy people. These are beautiful people. You know those people? Like they're beautiful people. Like they have minks on in July, shit like that. Those are the type of people they are. There's nothing worse than staying in front of a room of people who don't know they're going to see comedy. No, they didn't even know. So because like they don't the want, that, that's the last thing. You never want to be surprised with a stand-up. If you want to go see stand-up, you fucking go see stand-up. So right away, people were like, what the fuck is this? And the music was going, and the girls were dancing. It was it was a no-win. But the, wor the worst no-win we ever had, do you remember that place? I think it was in Kirkland. I had the birds in the, in the cages. Back. Yeah, he was fucking church. <laughs> During your set, it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be on stage, and the parrot was the size of a zoo. It he was, was huge. he was huge, and he would he would chip on shit. He'd be eaten, and the microphone would pick oh it up. Oh my god! <laughs> and you're like, I can't win. Can this fucking? And then there was like a piano in the room. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, for all you guys think that comedy is like this fucking luxurious career. Oh my god! It really isn't. Like it, the, the first couple of years, if couple you of a, years. If you first ten years, yeah. If you don't have a sense of humor, you are not going to make it. Nah. Like Felicia told me a story one time when she had to go to New York to showcase, and she had no money. And Dennis Leary said, "You could stay at my apartment. I'm, I don't stay in there." And that she went, and it was the dead of winter, and the window was broken. And that there was no blanket that she had to lay on the floor and the window was broken. Yeah. And she's like, this is comedy. This is what I chose. I go, did you feel bad? Were you scared? She goes, no. And then like an hour into the night, what's his name from the Tonight Show opened the door. That used to book. He was like a regular comic. Felicia said he didn't know I was staying there. So he came over one night and that's how they became friends. The guy that said girls aren't funny. Uh... He used to book Letterman. Him. Yeah, I know you're talking She about. goes, that's how I met him. 
was at Dennis Leary's apartment. She's talking like 1989 or something like that. Like, you know. So these are the stories that, yeah. that everybody thinks is like this fucking. I still remember there were nights. If I didn't, if I got caught in Seattle and fucked around, I would miss the last bus to your house in Bellevue. Mm-hmm. And I would have to sleep at Fucko's house, which was a pleasure also. Because you never knew what was going to happen. Wait a second. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that, that's that fucking Israel milk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that Israeli milk. <laughs> look, at, look at Lee. He's still fucked up. On that spot. He's 420 milligrams. 48 hours in. His eyes haven't been open since oh I, my I walked God. in here. I'm not even gonna eat tonight. I'm gonna hold <laughs> off and wait and see if I can fight off the munchies. That's the that was Custer's last words. I mean, to. but what? The, you, I mean, you got he's got food on his shirt. Oh, I got, I, water that I spit up. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea, guys. <laughs> we got fucked up last night. My wife found an apple core. And the blanket in the living room. She said when she got up this morning, she goes, I go to fold the blanket, and there's an apple core. What the fuck did you do last night? She goes, what did you drink? I made a protein shake. I ate a couple fucking apples. But, dog, at night, I'm on a different level. And you got to remember, I ate what Lee ate yesterday, plus a 100-milligram tube of quickies, which the guy that I gave a tube to, He's still fucked up today. <laughs> he called me today. He goes, you got me. <laughs> he goes, oh, my God, I was fucked up. I go, what happened to you? He goes, right after you left, he runs in subconscious jiu-jitsu. I gave him a tube. I went over there like 4 in the afternoon. I'm bored as fuck yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to die. This is the worst 4th of July Saturday. That was the worst thing. By the way. That was the worst thing. I've ever suffered through you my life. You love fucking people up. You abs. You take. You fucking. There's certain holidays yeah. that you need to be fucked up. <laughs> on. Holidays, days, hours. Yes, Saturday. <laughs> it's six o'clock on a Tuesday. My wife uh, has a friend, and the kid wanted to come over and play with Mercy, so we agreed to ride bikes. So we rode bikes for fucking two hours. And we would have to stop every like fifteen minutes and fucking talk. It's just not my Fourth of July. I'm yeah. not cut out for that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I look like Johnny Picnic. I'm not Johnny Picnic. <laughs> I want to eat at a table. I'm not into picnicking. Yeah. <laughs> Camping, people don't bathe. That's it. I don't like none of that shit. You know, I'm not gonna talk to you in the morning. I know you didn't shower. Yeah, I know you didn't shower. And you want to talk to me about what? You know. So I'm really, I got. It was just the worst Fourth of July ever. When it ended, when we got home at three thirty. My wife knew just by looking at me. I took the bike. I helped her carry the shit in. I took my bike. I put it in the back. I went to look at the weed, and I had like an eighth left of some dynamite shit. I did two bong hits, and I'm like, this isn't going to be enough. If I, I am so bored on the 4th of July, I'm going to fucking cry. But there's only one thing I could do to stop me from crying. Like, I'm just going to load up on edibles. So I went over to Urban Trees. I bought two quickies. What's a quickies? Quickies is a tube. It's a hundred milligram. It's like a five hour energy of fucking. Like THC. a five hour energy drink. Of oh, THC. it's a drink. Yeah, it's like five hour energy, but they have an indica, a sativa, and they have that nighttime blend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They don't even sell that. That's nah. just horrendous stuff. Do you know what I found out? <laughs> the in it. I found out that ABX. Which I love. Has a sleeping blend. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I know if I take two of these, I'm sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean a sleeping addition? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know until I went to Urban Trees. I go, what the fuck is this? They have it like in 25 and 50 milligrams. That must be perfect. That'll kill somebody. Yeah. So what they're doing is now is they're putting like melatonin, CBN, Fucking the other shit root. I drink a tea that's three milligrams. Yeah. I dare you motherfuckers to drink it. Kikomo tea. Three the, milligrams. Three milligrams of THC. Three milligrams of THC. Three milligrams of CBN, not CBD. What's CBN? CBN cuts your legs off. 
Your legs start <laughs> wobbling and shit. It's like you got punched in the head. And how do I know? Because I overdose on that shit every night. I don't only drink. I don't drink one tea bag. I do three. Okay, so that's nine milligrams of THC, CBN, and like everything else I just told you about. Yeah, melatonin, fucking echinacea root, anything that puts you to sleep. It's all put into one thing. That's brilliant. That is the most brilliant thing I ever heard. You sleep through the night. Oh. <laughs> You will sleep during the night, during the day. You know, you'll sleepwalk. And here's the thing that people do not know. The one thing I always avoid, like when I have a lot of anxiety, the doctor prescribed the little white ones. Mm -hmm. And those little white ones don't do no, I, Like I don't take them at night because you can't sleep on you sleep apnea you can't take that that's what people don't know uh, people don't know that you can't take sleep aids when you have sleep apnea that you'll rest too much and you'll fucking die uh, a friend of ours died from that there's a comedian who died from having sleep apnea taking xanax and drinking and didn't use a machine and he died so i made it a habit but that those cbd things like CBD from CBD line. Yeah. If I do the 2,000 milligrams under my tongue, it takes me a longer time. It's an hour till I fall asleep. But when I hit, I'm hitting. You hit. You hit. You hit hard. You know what I'm saying? So when you take all that shit and sprinkle 100 milligrams of THC in it, and not just 100, <laughs> they, they put 99 in to keep it at the legal level, okay? Oh, my God. Because you can't sell 100 milligrams. So how so high really, are you? How how long are you high? Okay, so let's talk forever. What are you talking let's about? talk narcotics here. This fucking butt. He gets high for three. Look at him. He's still high from last night. He's still high from last so night. So are you. No, I'm not. I burn it off. <laughs> I burn it off. I get on that bicycle. I sweat it out because I know more is coming in. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what type of day I'm going to have. I prepare my day mentally. I prepare already for tomorrow. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I know when I can do it and when I can't do it. I got to be at the gym at yeah, 1045. Yeah, yeah. So I have an appointment. So I know. But after that, I'm loose. <laughs> I don't have to go to the comedy store. So it's a loose. It's not like I have to stay sober for anything anymore. You know what I'm saying? By, by the way, you just perfectly described my entire time yeah, during quarantine. This is quarantine. I'm loose. I'm loose. You're loose. Too. I'm loose as fuck. You have nowhere yeah, to I'm be. Super loose. Why yeah. are you doing this yeah. to yourself? Yeah, yeah. Why are you living like a half a fag if you don't have to? There's nowhere to be. Super loose. This is the time to do heroin. Whatever yeah. the fuck you want to do, yeah. this is the time. I told you, I've been taking a bunch of mushrooms. Oh, because, I know. Yeah, I love this it. is the time. Super loose. So if you're going to go, go. Yeah. Now, I was so fucking bored on the 4th of July. I was about to kill somebody. There was not a soul on the streets of California. Not a soul. I walk into the weed store. I was like Frankenstein. They're like, hey. <laughs> so they just stacked me up. I said, listen, it's a bad day. The chick's like, okay, honey. And she just started putting quickies in there. She put two things of. Pills, the, the, I don't know what they call. <laughs> different level. Oh, they were a complete different level. The last time I gave them to him, he like ate them. And like eight minutes later, he goes, I can feel these already. <laughs> right? they, were, they just go off. And you Are they the same type? No, no, they're like little fucking pills. They come 10 in a container to 25 milligrams a piece. And you're going to go down hard. So really? I bought two canisters of quickies. Two canisters of those. Now, no, I got these everywhere. You yeah. see these? I got these everywhere. So I fucking was driving out of Lancashire. I saw my boy sitting there by himself. I go, how can I let him? What kind of gentleman am I? I got to let him sit, a man sit by himself on the 4th of July. So I made the U-turn. I go back. I went in there with both tubes in my hand. Yeah. He was like eating like five guys. No, he was eating um, Jersey Mike's. And he's like, how you doing? I go, good. I go, I brought you a present. He goes, what is that? I go, edible. He goes, I, I got ayahuasca in the back and some of us go, that, you don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> he finished the sandwich. I let him finish the sandwich. <laughs> and I just open it. You don't ask people. You don't you don't say nothing. You just open it. 
You fucking stick a key in the top, and you give it to him. That's it's like a Ben Franklin close. What's a Ben <laughs> Franklin close? They turn around, they put a pen, they turn around. Whoever talks first loses. So I gave him the bottle, and he just looked at it, and he goes, what's in this? I go, what do you think of this? Just drink it. I popped mine, and I went all the way back, like fucking, like I was on the Titanic. You should have seen it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and I saw him go like three quarters. It was about 3.30. Yeah. So I sat there with him until about 10 to 4. At 10 to 4, I said, I got to go. I had been torturing him for about oh. since about 9 in the morning. Yeah. I'm coming over, you're on fire, drink milk. Because I still got the 1,000 milligram brownies. Ugh. The what? 1,000 milligram brownies. Look, look, look at the look on his face. It tastes like dirt. That you eat hummus. <laughs> I see the tacos. <laughs> I see the food you eat. Yo, this is fine. This is way better than the food you eat. No, we no. had those communist hat burgers <laughs> yesterday for the 4th of July. The frozen patty ones. They, even in jail, you eat better. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this I still got those thousand milligram chocolate ones. Those things you eat a whole one of those, you have no idea. Oh, listen, that, listen, it's not fucking Sara Lee. Yeah, no, I get it. But you get a glass of milk. Yeah, no, I get you it. You dip it in there, you dope it up, you force your way. It tastes great. It just tastes like weed with chemicals in it, like animal animal drink. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. They, listen, we're spoiled by the way edibles taste. Now. Right. When they when they first came out, they all tasted like that. They did. They every single one was I like got just some hash like... at the house. I'm gonna make tonight. Maybe I'm gonna make some hash cookies. Oh yeah. I got some real nice hash from the one I drew. He brought me some real fucking hash. Does he have a patch? He's got a patch. Oh. He gets his dick sucked more than anybody. I told Lee we should just take your eye out because <laughs> if you ain't getting no pussy, <laughs> people, a... guys with eye patches get pussy. What eye? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know. Yeah. Guys with eye patches get pussy. He gets pussy. So he brought me over this Egyptian hash. Guys with eye patches. It's on fire. This shit's on fire. Really? I had to stop smoking. It's too much. So yeah, I'm going to eat it. Bruce Lee used to eat that shit. And that guy in, in uh, Hollywood, they used to make uh, sugar cookies. Me and Ralphie used to eat them. Ooh, hash is a different. Yeah. Animal. When you eat hash alone and you wake up, like you got 18 massages. Everything is loose. So I think I'm going to eat that ash tonight, Jack, when I get home. Wait, are you going to cook it up? I'm going to cook it up and put it in something. Tonight? Tonight. Maybe make like hash chicken noodle soup. <laughs> or candles or something like that. That is not what I thought you were going to say. What the no. fuck? What's it, you put it in anything. It's going to yeah. taste the same. That's what they do. That's what the chefs do. You they, break that down. A little how, bit. What do you, melt it down in butter? Melt it with a little butter. Yeah. Just take it, drip it, wait till it take, melts into like that. Black little paste. Yeah. You put that right into the cookies. Ooh. Ooh. Sometimes. I, 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 so hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. So hold on. Let me tell you about the rest of oh, the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So I give it to him. At, I leave at 10 to 4. I go, I can't torture Lee until I know he's fully tortured. So about 4.30, I start calling <laughs> my boy. And he ain't answering the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I know he's fucked up. <laughs> so it's 4.30. I left the dude 40 minutes ago. I was just going to call him up to check it on him. He ain't answering the phone. Yeah. So I called him at 430. I called him again at 5. He didn't pick up. That's one down. Now I got this pigeon to work on. So I call him up. He's like, I'm in. Come on. Bring it, bitch. He starts challenging me and shit, Lee. Mm. He's like, bring it, bitch. I'm ready. Where are you? I'm waiting here for you. I go, I'll be right over. So we split. After I drank the 100... We ate three more hundred and 125 in pills. Oof. So I really had 525 in me. And then I went home and functioned like nothing. I drew with my daughter. I hung out for like nine. I watched a movie with them. That's right. I watched whatever. Toy Story 4. I watched Toy Story and I was losing my mind. 525 milligrams? 525 milligrams. Then Do the Right Thing came on. And my wife goes, I'm going to go. to." It was like about quarter to ten. And that's when I started feeling it. It started coming on. I started smoking ash. I'm smoking reefer. I mean, nicotine gum and shit. I'm getting <laughs> fucked up, Jack. I'm getting, I'm getting fucked up. I remember making a protein shake. 
And then after the protein shake, I go, oh, fuck. I got those THC pills from Kikimo. So I was listening to Velvet Revolver, the one album, and I was writing some. Guys, I'm sorry. You know how it is. You ever start eating some, popping them in your mouth, and after and then you look down and yeah. there's like four left? Yeah. Dog, there was four left. Oh, no. I had eaten like 20 of those Kikamo sleep aids. Yeah. I'm like, am I going to fuck you? <laughs> so after about 30 minutes, I go, I feel all right. I'm not going to die. I go, you know what? Let me go watch Narcos. I still had Narcos on whatever. I go, let me go watch this last episode of Narcos. And I put three Kikamo tea things Jesus. into a fucking mug. And I fucking drank <laughs> that. And that's it. Oh, that's it? That's all I remember. I know I didn't go in. I know I tumbled in there about two, maybe. I don't fucking know. Though. First of all, I after was, 525 milligrams, I I would be, I don't even know what the fuck would happen to me at 500. You have I have, no, here's the scary thing, guys. They, these, like, I'm done with. Like, I have to take a breather from these. Oh, I, could, wow. I could definitely eat four pills and walk out of here in a half hour. No. See, I, there's no I could, way. Bro, I could do three and nothing happens. What are you talking about? You're just sitting passed out all day. No, I didn't pass out last night. I passed out at like two in the fucking morning, but I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big difference. And I got up at seven. I got up at seven, seven thirty. Yeah. Like nothing happened. It's like nothing happened. I got up at seven thirty, like nothing happened. I went in, I looked at the computer, there was nothing happening. And I put my sweats on and I had But you 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 don't wake up high or nothing. I had fifty four weight watcher points. I gotta hit sixty one for my goal. So I said, fuck this. I got up. I drank a cup of coffee. I got a little Zoom to me. I drank this little red stuff, like a pre-energy drink from yeah. on it. I drank a little bit of that. I went right back in that bathroom. I did three fucking bong hits. And That's the funny. last one had a chunk of hash. <laughs> the thing went on fire. The thing was on fire. The hash thing was on fire. I'm all, and, and I hear my daughter, Dad. I'm like, <laughs> I'm blowing the fucking thing out in the back bathroom. She, I finally walk out. She's like, where you been? I, go, I was back there seeing something. Like, like, you know. I, go, I can't I, even imagine all of the things you've told her you were doing. Oh, I was in back fighting a dragon. She or whatever never the comes looking for me, really, at 8 in the morning. Like, she never comes looking for me at 8. She comes around about 8.30. She sits in her room playing that Spanish fucking game, learning how to speak Spanish on her own. So what? There's a scam. There's like a program that teaches you how to, your kid how to speak Spanish. So she fucking loves it. She does it all fucking day. Then she comes and tortures me in Spanish with that fucking, with that book Spanish. I don't know the book Spanish. You know, so the one day we were doing it together, she got like three wrong. She's like, what type of Spanish are you? She's like, fuck you. She's like, I'll take my chances by myself. She goes, what kind of Spanish are you? How are you Spanish? You got three wrong. I go, I don't understand this. Como, come on. I don't fucking know this shit pronouns. Just speak the fucking Spanish I'm talking, all right? Talking that shit. Uh, you got three wrong. Back to back. There you go. Salute. There you go. Those Jew farts don't have no milk to them, though. They're like kosher. They got no stink to them. You know what I'm saying? I'm too close to the door. They're kosher farts. Yeah, not I want Lee to inhale those and to make some feel at home. You know what I'm saying? He smells those during fucking Passover. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lee. Yeah. Up, I called him. I'm like, Lee, you walking? I ain't walking. <laughs> I, that, I, 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 I call Steve Simone. Steve, call Lee. Tell him he's going to walk with you. Tell him it's all over. I, 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 I can't walk. No walk. That's the best time I to walk it. is when you're No, high. it's not. It's in the 100 degrees that you want me to go outside and walk. Dog, it's good for you. You yeah. sweat that shit out. It's good for your skin. Yeah. Listen, if this is what his eyes look like right now, where is he going to walk? He can't. His eyes must not Dog, have been open earlier that's today. That's the way to walk. If you're going to walk to get healthy, that's how to walk. You don't want to walk straight. You're not going to do nothing straight. You got to smoke to walk. You put your little iPod on 
and you start walking. How long are you? And next thing you know, you're in fucking Hollywood. <laughs> Remember Mike Ricky used to walk to yeah. Hollywood from the valley. Don't fucking tell me. Don't fucking tell me. Why? Because he's high as fuck. Where is Ricky right now? Who knows? But don't tell me. He used to walk over that fucking hill. Walk over that fucking hill every day. Not like you. He lost like fucking 80 pounds in a week. Remember? He was like, there's nothing to do at home. Yeah. <laughs> what makes you walk from the valley? I could be bored as fuck. I'm not walking to Hollywood. That's not happening. No. Because once you're in route, you're in route. But, dude, you used once to you're walk Royal Canyon. everywhere. Oh, yeah. I used to walk for fucking. That's why you walked everywhere. So I told my wife the other day, like, I'm done with walking. Yeah. She's you. like, really? I go, I can't do it no more. I am sick of walking. I walked for four. I'm from New York, guys. I walked. I walked as a kid. Dude, you walked here. Nobody fucking walks here. You walked here. I used to walk from yeah your house to Argyle and back like nothing. Because I used to sell screws on Argyle. I could walk from Vista. Bro, I still remember us walking from that place to the comedy store and back like nothing. My place? No, that fucking bar we used to do oh, on yeah. Tuesday nights. Union. And we didn't know if the comedy store was going to have a room. I still remember going to the comedy store, getting coke, walking back to the union, knowing you got to walk back. It's fucking July. Yeah, it's fucking warm. hot at night. We and, used to walk. And man. that place had no air conditioning. No, we used to go out to the patio yard. Mm -hmm. The other place had no air conditioning. Well, when it was packed in there, it was hot. Can you fucking believe that was 25 years ago? No, dude. About? I can't. Yeah, my first feature weekend legitimately. I had a feature weekend. I always tell people my first real feature weekend was Livonia, Joey's in Detroit, and Livonia in, in uh, Dearborn. That was my first feature weekend, but that wasn't an A club at the time. The Underground was an A club. My first feature weekend was with Daryl Lennox in in Moscow. In Moscow, that doesn't count. And I then it's got to be a club to the, push you up. The first one at the underground might have been Dave Fulton. Yeah, probably Dave Fulton. It might have been. Yeah, I think it might have been Dave Fulton. Eh, I don't know, man. I don't know if he was around <coughs> that. Er I don't know if he was around early when we were there. Yeah, wasn't he, was. he around later? He was around. He was coming back from England and stuff like that. He was going back and forth. I think great guy. Yeah, great comedy. You know, that was it. You know, it was it's funny dude, too. Denver was great for me. You know, like you know, like when you give when you try to open up a jar, and you try and you try and you try and you try and you can't open up that jar, and then you give it to your fucking grandmother who's ninety, and she clicks it open. That's what I felt Seattle did for me. Like I was trying too hard in Denver. Seattle was when I found out. You know what? I'm gonna stick with this. Like Denver was still. But did Denver? The thing that I found that was different about Seattle was you could find longer sets. When you were starting, all your sets weren't just three or five minutes. Sometimes in the early, we were still doing 10 or 15 minutes. I sets. thank Seattle for one thing. I thank Seattle for one thing. Like, I went to a college. Yeah. I went a to doubt. a comedy college. Yeah. I really am very proud of my comedy path. That's why I fought so fucking hard for it. And, man... You know, it, so it was a place where, like, at the time, it was a good place to be a comic because it was a good, it was a good vibe, was man. Very, People were helping each other very out. Very good community. Yeah. Let me tell you what Seattle taught you. Because of the contest, the contest is so revolved in the Seattle community that Monday and Tuesdays was six minutes with a light at five. Yeah. But people who aren't who are at home, you're like, what's so big about that? You don't know how, what it is to learn how to be a comic. Finally, fight for all these years to get all this time, and one day somebody comes to you and goes, "Oh, by the way, we don't need you to do 25. You're gonna do six with a light at five, and if you go over six, you get a point taken off in the contest. If you do seven, you get two points taken off." So you learn why they did that, okay? Yeah. So this is what a lot of people don't know at home that are comedy fans about different scenes. Seattle scene was focused around the six minutes. 
because they wanted you to be ready for the contest. So he taught you how to all year round. No, I don't give a fuck if you just did three hours in Yakima. We really don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck if you did three hours in New York. Here on a Monday, you're going to do five. You're going to get the a light of five, and you're going to get off at six, yeah. whether you like it or not. And Carl would not let your eyes back on there if you ran that fucking light. You did 15, Carl would even tell you at the end, good set, call me again, come back next Monday. He would, you would not get put on that fucking stage for lack of respect. Mitzi Shaw, now you do that for two years, then you come down here, and what does Mitzi Shaw train you to do? Three minutes. Yeah, that was really hard. So think of the fucking, why I'm so grateful that I took the path I did. Yeah. Because if you thought telling your life story in six minutes is hard, bitch, I got another one for you. Tell your life story in three fucking minutes. Yeah. So that was a complete different animal. And it's a comedy store. You don't run the light on a three minutes spot. Not sure. when she's sitting there. Not when she's sitting there. You better... Get the fuck, <laughs> you really get the fuck off. Yeah. So do you see those two educations? It was two different trains of thought. I got my hustle, Seattle, and Josh Josh doesn't remember this. I'm sitting eating chicken mole one day. And now we're brothers. I mean he's my brother. I love him to that death. But then I didn't know Craig Gas. No. I didn't know Craig Gas. And I'm sitting at Lobo Loco one day. Chomping on some chicken mole on the arm, of course. <laughs> and Craig asks, you go, do you know Craig? And I go, no. And Craig opens up with, so you're the guy that's taking everybody's work up here. That's how much work I was eating for lunch. And I go, yeah, what's the problem? He goes, man, it's not fair. You can't come up here. And I'm like, come again? You're dealing with the wrong motherfucker, dog. I'm trying to pay child support. I'm trying to keep a nose habit yeah. going. I got a stripper girlfriend. I got to pay rent. And I got a thousand things going on. Yeah. If you don't think I'm eating your fucking lunch, you know. And he knows for a fact that Laura Car Crocker, God rest his soul, did not like me. But guess where I was Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights doing a free set for Laura Crocker. And at the end, I got the last laugh. I would drive an hour to do a 10-minute guest at Laura Crocker's. And I still remember the owner saying to me, how come I haven't heard of you before? And I would tell him, she don't like me. But it's okay. I'm just doing a set. Yeah. That's the mentality. Like, I turned into I a forgot, savage up I there. I forgot that she didn't like you. Yeah. She, we and her got into an argument. And she told you, tell him not to call me. Guess who I called every Monday at night, 10 after 9? Laura Crocker. Remember I used to tell you, call? I don't give a fuck. Nine o'clock I used to call. She hated me. And she knew every Monday, because no, those days, Tuesdays, yeah. was National <coughs> Booking Day. She knew on Tuesday, not 10 after 9, I would wake her up every Tuesday. I you doing, Laura Crocker? Joe Diaz. And you would hear like, yeah. And I would just, I knew her schedule of all her rooms. I would have it in front of me, and I would just call her to irritate her, to let her know that even though she didn't like me, I was still winning the war here. Yeah. Like, you may not like me, but I'm going to do your room for free, because that's the type of motherfucker I am, because I know at the end of the week, I'm just getting better. I'm going up in front of 70 people. I'm killing your feature. Whoever you got featuring, once I go up there, his lights are out. The headline don't really want me up there. No. You know, at that time, no. I was already, once Stanhope came up there in yep. 96, once I saw that style, yep. then I, conv it took like two months after that, and I started going off on Monday nights. <laughs> I started going <laughs> off on Monday nights. It yeah. was like a different thing. Once I saw Stanhope in 96, I was like, this shit I'm doing with the suits, Remember when I did Joey Diaz and his Mambo Kings of oh, Comedy? Oh, yeah. They'll tell you. I used to have maracas. They'll yeah. tell you. I used to work. I worked every angle. Guys, 
<laughs> you want to laugh? Laugh all you oh, want. Oh, the three the piece thing I, suit. The only thing great. I didn't do was hypnotize bitches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I, I never worked the hypnotize. Thing. I wore a fedora. He so. wore a fedora. <laughs> you, this is the levels of comedy that yeah, you do. All right. And ever since that day, me and Craig Gas became friends. Like I was like, Craig, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to work, pay bills, and get better as a comic. And that changed that. And then we became great friends. Yeah. You know, then we became Lionel. Lionel. Lionel, there was a at the oh, so you gotta remember this, you know. Dude, he's on Facebook. No, he's not. A hundred percent. Don't tell me his last name afterwards because okay. I wanna go hook him up. That was you know, I don't know what people think comedy clubs are. But for most people, and I want you to spread the word, they're not a church. And there'll never, ever be a sanctuary. Let's not even talk about the comedy store. Let's not even talk about the club where I came up in Denver. Let's talk about the underground for a second. Okay? At this time. And this is my witness. I still remember going to the underground at a quarter to eight, because that's what you did on Monday nights. You got there at a quarter to eight. You already signed up. Once you got seniority, Carl signed you up. But we would go at a quarter to eight. How many nights did you walk in there? And at eight o'clock, Billy was already doing blow, the bartender. Oh, come on, dude. He used to have false teeth, and his teeth would rattle. And he would show them to you. He would show them, like, dog, you can't write this shit. But his laugh, you could hear his laugh. <laughs> he was just like, high-pitched. It was crazy. Bananas. How hot was his girlfriend? Crazy. The Asian. Crazy hot. Do you know how many nights I saw her at 7.30 watching a comic and she would nod off from the heroin? Come on. What's the other guy that's on Facebook that used to work on Saturdays at the club with the white hair? Another fucking great guy that lives in Ireland now, close to Fulton. Uh, with the white hair? White hair back then with little hippie glasses. Oh, uh, How good were these guys? Yes. Yeah. I remember sitting there with him one yeah, night going, yeah, yeah. bro, look at the waitress. She was nodding on the heroin. Billy was high on coke. She was high on heroin. Two of the other waitresses were high on heroin. Heroin was big up there. That's what fucking uh, Alice, this is, we're there 95, guys. I still remember going to Giggles, and the hottest waitress at Giggles was a hippie chick. And I used to buy like pills from her or weed or whatever coke and i still remember her saying to me when are you gonna go up to uh lance what was the singer of alice in chains uh lane stanley is that his name is that his name alice in chains the singer he's dead i I don't know how many times she said to me when are you gonna come up to lane's house or whatever so we could do some smack they were all going to capitol hill that girl was beautiful she had to be if it was 95, I was 32. She had to be 23, 24. I don't know how many times she sold me drugs. A little hippie chick. Lane Staley? Lane Staley. Nice. I don't know how many times she told me on Saturday nights. If you want to go up to Lane's and get high, you're always welcome. And I'm like, heroin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that needle shit? Can you imagine? If I, I nah. can't see blood. I yeah. can't see needles. I would have gone up there if it was a cocaine party. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would have gone up there. If you would have said if the emphasis was cocaine, I would have still been at Lane Staley's house. <laughs> I would have still been at Lane Staley's house. That's Lane Staley. Yeah. That's down in the hole. You ain't leaving. You ain't leaving. You're just gonna die in his living room. But she didn't say nothing about blow. I think she would get me blow, but she would always say to me, You gotta come up, you gotta do a yeah, shot. Yeah, but and you And I'm like, I'm not doing no fucking shot at fucking Lane Staley's house. That was giggles in the U district. Yeah. That was like, we had I that. barely, I barely. Yeah, you didn't mess with him. I didn't mess with him. I never liked him. I never fucking. You couldn't liked. mess with him because Laura didn't mess with him. There was something with Laura and the underground. John yeah. John Fox. So since Laura was your manager. But he also, this dude, what was his name? Pat. The, the owner of the Giggles? Yeah. The, when we first got there, the owner of Giggles was a pilot in Vietnam. And he had been shot down. And he was fucking nuts. He had a Jaguar. He drove a black Jaguar. What was it? And he pulled up. Don't remember. He pulled up on the side. If you were on stage, 
you could see him pull up, and you knew you had to go PG thirteen. Before that, you were up there eating ass. But it's weird because he was, <laughs> you know. And as soon as he would pull up, you would have to go. He would walk through the back of the showroom, and I have to go to knock knock jokes like. What animal don't you play cards with? A cheetah. Ah, ah. <laughs> and once he would leave that thing, I'd start all over again with suck my dick. You fucking you district motherfuckers. This shit. So what was the track coach from Washington State? Nicest guy in the world. Funniest motherfucker. He plays flappers. And every time he's a flapper, what? I want to go over there and say hello to him and hug him. He was the guy with the glasses from Seattle. He was a professor. Fucking funny motherfucker. He performs down here? Yes. He comes down once a year and does flappers. He's on stage one night. It's <laughs> he, this motherfucker, I think, was on the Tonight Show. Yeah. Okay? And he's a funny fucking dude, and he's spotless clean. Let me tell you how fucking crazy the owner was. I'm up on stage talking about farting people's faces, whatever. He's up there talking about Disneyland at the end. We're both sitting at the bar, and the owner walks up to him and says, let me tell you something. When I went through the showroom, you were a little dirty before. <laughs> and he turns away from him, and he looks at me, this guy, and he goes, you motherfucker. He goes, that's how retarded the owner of Giggles was. He went up to him and said, you were a little dirty before. And he's like, you motherfucker. How do you do this? And then that same way, like, <laughs> I was buddies with a couple of waitresses up there. They all started Coke, the Giggles girls. The I Giggles used to get the, co the Coke from the waitress at the underground. All the, all the, all the, yeah, all yeah. those waitresses. But the girl at Giggles used to get me Coke, especially. So I had it down. Let me tell you how down I had Giggles. Thursday night was that shit room we had. He had a shit room. Olympia. Ooh, who shot that duck? Uh, That's where he goes. <laughs> Olympia. Hold on one second. I time. really hope you fall off that chair. Please fall. <laughs> uh, uh, Olympia. So you did Olympia on Thursday. He did something else there on Thursdays. So my goal was always to leave, leave Olympia. You could drive with the headliner. Fuck you. I would leave Olympia while, while the headliner was on stage, and I'd shoot up to Giggles, and I'd catch him. He goes, weren't you in Olympia? Yeah. Let me get 100 advance. And he would give me, Already? Can't you can't just wait till Saturday? Listen, I ain't got time to wait till Saturday. I play the water bill. Give me a hundred bucks, will you? He would give me a hundred, and he was such a Vietnam vet that on Saturday he would pay me the full amount. So I started telling everybody, yo, come here. On Thursdays, don't wait. Go up there, hit him up for the hundred. <laughs> <laughs> he won't write it down because he's a Vietnam vet. He's retarded. He'll fucking <laughs> <laughs> on America's birthday, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in those days, Vietnam vets were gone. Like you, you know, they were gone. You know, so this went on. Like everybody, I told, like you have no idea. I told even Gavin did it. That was the whitest guy in America. <laughs> Gavin wouldn't rob anybody, but a hundred bucks. Yeah, that was a hundred bucks. bucks. I was telling everybody. Fuck yeah, every feature was like, "Dog, you're right." <laughs> He doesn't remember. No wonder the place closed down. <laughs> <laughs> then, a Mor then a Mormon guy bought it. He was like, you're That's not the dude. Yeah, Terry. 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 He's like, You're not working here. I haven't heard 20 yeah. rumors about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't know the first guy. Terry is the dude. <laughs> Terry, the club was cool, guys. We were yeah. a family. Nobody fucked nobody. <laughs> nobody got their dick sucked. That, that club was a drug. College club. It was in a, it was right in the U District of Seattle, mm -hmm. and I would love working there because Saturdays I would get great coke up there. But there was two or three waitresses who were solid there. The heroin chick, 
Then there was a white chick, and I would tell her, Friday, psst, come here. Who's featuring next week? And she'd go, hold on, because he'd have a calendar up. And she'd go, nobody. i go, watch this. I would work Thursday Olympia, Friday at the club, Saturday at the club. I'd have contact with him both nights. Do you know I'd call him Monday at 9 o'clock and go, yo, Joe Diaz. He'd go, how you doing, Joey? I go, who's your feature this week? And he'd go, when was the last time you featured at the club? <laughs> I go, last year. He goes, all right, you got the job next week. <laughs> That's how crazy that guy was, that he would just see me. I just worked with him Friday and Saturday. I would call him Monday, and I would ask him when I could feature. And he'd go, <laughs> when was the last time you featured at the club? And i go, oh last gosh. year, remember? And then I got Gavin on it. So it was there was a point where I would be there for two weeks, Gavin would be there for two weeks, I would be there for two weeks. It was like stealing. It was like the perfect fucking comedy dream up there. We I, were just kids. Yeah, I can't you, believe I never. You know, that. last night I told you two nights ago I'm watching Fourth of July night. The night I got fucking stoned. Yeah, that's one of the one of the things because I remember the end of the eleven. I watched Do the Right Thing. I went to get up to go piss last night. And it was when Giancarlo, what's the dude that everybody thinks is good from Breaking Bad? Uh, Gian, the black dude with the little circular glasses. Yeah. Giancarlo, whatever, is having a talk with Radio Rahim. And they're talking about overthrowing Sal's. That we need to boycott Sal's famous. And he goes, yeah, that motherfucker yelled at me for having my stereo on. Didn't even say please. And he goes, we spent mucho money. He goes, we spend mucho dollars in there. And they ain't got no pictures of brothers on the wall. He goes, they just got a bunch of look of Sylvester Stallone looking motherfuckers <laughs> up on the wall. I was standing up, guys, last night. I was walking up into the living room to go to use the house bathroom instead of mine. I was in a pee in there because I thought I had a shit. When he said, uh, he has a bunch of Sylvester Stallone looking motherfuckers up there. He needs to put some brothers up on the wall. My knee buckled because it was the first time I had thought about Brody in a long time. Me, Josh, Brody, like six of us are down in Gig Harbor, Washington one Saturday night. And we're like eating a bag of dick. We don't know who's headlining. We would just show up. Like if you hired me and Josh, six motherfuckers. <laughs> That's just how it was. <laughs> We're all gonna, but you only, you, you're supposed to do 45. Yeah, you're supposed to do yeah, 30. Yeah. Well, there's six we of got, us. We got it. We'll we fill it just up. do 10 apiece. Yeah. 10 a, and we'd all go like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it was crazy. And I still remember going to Gig Harbor when I when we put them in the back trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept yelling at me and shit. I told him because he pissed me off. Don't fucking tell me you can't make it to Gig Harbor in an hour and a half. And That's he kept right. arguing with me. Don't fucking tell me. <laughs> Dog, when I tell you I could do something, I could do it. I'm not telling you because I'm lying to you. He kept telling me he couldn't drive from Seattle to Gig Harbor oh. in an hour. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? He goes, it takes me like three hours. God rest his soul, Brody Steven. <laughs> He's arguing with me one night. I'm like, Brody, we're leaving here at fucking six o'clock. I'm not getting it. Don't take you no fucking three hours. He had a Volvo station wagon. Did he not, Josh? Yes, he did. We put him in the kid's seat in the back. <laughs> you know how the back opens up? I took him by the throat. I go, get in that fucking back. <laughs> and shut the fuck up. I'm going to show you how to get a gig hard in an hour and a half. And we were doing 90, and the, there wasn't even an HOV. We yeah. made our own fucking way. <laughs> we, look at him. He remembers. And Brody Stevens kept yelling, stop. <laughs> Slow down. Normal people don't live like this. I'm like, I'm not normal fucking people. I'm not normal yeah. people. I'm a comedian. Yeah. All right? And I still remember him being livid at me there and going up on stage. Oh, he was mad. And he had the owner of Gig Harbor had thousands of pictures of people up on the wall. Oh. White, black, Spanish, Vince Valenzuela. He had all these famous <laughs> comics up there. But I don't know what happened. Brody's furious. He's doing his set. In the middle of all this, he looks up at the wall and he goes, where's the fucking owner? And the owner's like, I'm the owner. He goes, you better put some fucking Jews up on that fucking wall. 
Oh my God, we lost in the back. I'm not coming here ever fucking again till you put some Jews up on that wall. He's yelling at the yelling. This is Gig Harbor. I haven't seen a Jew since fucking the Great Depression. Oh you know what I'm saying? God. Jews left Seattle. Like They were like, we ain't staying up here. This is too dark. It reminds us of Auschwitz. There's no Jews in Seattle. There's not a temple in Seattle. It reminds them too much of Auschwitz. It, there's no sunlight. There's no sunlight. You don't see Jews visiting Seattle. Fuck you. Or Buffalo. There's a oh couple in Buffalo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He, he kept... When he got out of the car in the parking lot, he was still yelling at me. He slammed the door and he said, I do not live my life this way. (laughs) 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 He was so fucking mad. And he was in the back making those fucking weird, huh? Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) I was getting this. I was. I was getting this close to cars. I'm holding yeah. my fingers uh, yeah. an inch just to fuck with them. I would get real close to the car. Oh, he beep, was, beep. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. This car's in my mother's name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That was really funny. Oh, my God. Then he had a cable access show, and he had a pager. Oh, and shit. I got the pager number. And he's thinking he's on the fucking Carol Burnett show, Brody. God rest his soul. And I'm a Gavin's just fucking down his page. And he's dying to pick it up. His legs are shaking. He's dying. He thinks it's like a Hollywood producer. I'm leaving messages. I'm fucking. And finally, right on the TV show, he went in his pocket. He's like, fuck you, Joe Diaz. Oh, my God. Oh. Holy shit. That's what comedy's about, ladies and gentlemen, okay? 25 fucking years, like, just... Oh, my God. And you want me to tell you something, Joshua? Let's tell him about the story. We got so coked up, we walked that dog, like, two miles. <laughs> <laughs> we got so coked up, me and Josh. We left at dark light, and we got back. It was daylight. That poor dog was like, you got to take me home. <laughs> you two guys won't shut the fuck up. Bud, oh, God rest his soul. Oh, my God. We took Bud on a walk. It That's, was dark. That's St. Bernard. There was raccoons. <laughs> and we're walking. I'm doing coke on the walk. I'm uh, telling him about my mother, finding my mother on the floor. Yeah. He's like, I never knew that about you. You were getting ready to leave. This is... 96. Se- got to be 96. September of 96. Yeah. Like, you were leaving the following week. I had to move out of his house. I lived in his back house. Malia. That was a great setup, by the way. It yeah. was a great setup. That was a great setup. This was a great house. We were hidden. What'd you pay for that house? Maybe 1100 something like that. It was gigantic. Yeah. It huge. was fucking gigantic. Huge. It was... But do you remember... Do you remember when she... Where she was putting the garbage, she was putting it in the garage, and she wasn't taking it out, and so we had these mound, this mound of garbage oh, in the Lord. garage, and um, I said, I called the exterminator, and I was like, hey, and I didn't know this, I go, hey man, so I think we have some critters, will you take a look into the house, and he goes, yeah, and he got mm, maybe his head in, and he turned around, and he goes. I go, what's wrong? He goes, there's a lot of eyes looking back at me. I go, what? In Under the house. And he goes, there's got to be a food source somewhere around here. I'm like, a food source? Like, what the fuck? And he goes, let's go check the garage. And I opened the garage. And she'd just been taking the trash out to the garage. <laughs> So he was like, here's the food source. I was like, get the fuck. Because we had that circular driveway. So we never we never used the garage. I love her to death. The best. But till this day, she is the filthiest woman. She's the reason why I want to eat Thai food. No, that's not right. I swear to God. Because she used to not wash dishes and the fruit flies. Don't lie to me. Remember, we used to make fun of her. Yeah. There was always yeah. fruit flies in the kitchen. Every time you were in the kitchen, you had a fucking squat. So she was tied. So I held that against her. Like, if fucking you don't wash your dishes, Wait, I ain't eating. One no. person is the reason why? Oh, that's all I need. 
<laughs> they sent me the wrong representative. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to send me the representative, send me the right Thai dude. I loved her. She was my she, sister. Yeah. I loved her. Except. But when it came to that shit, she drove me crazy. She would not. I remember one time you left like a month. I had to wash dishes. The water was like quick. Like the kids wanted something to drink. It was like sticking your hand in quick hand. Like the thing was going to grab you. That's how murky. Because she would soak the dishes and not wash them. Jesus and I'm like, how do I get a glass? And I'm like, here goes. You gotta like close your eyes and stick your hand in the fucking water. I still remember Vista with the fruit flies, and you used to bit. Don't make believe you. Know, oh no, I remember the fruit I flies. Used to, I remember we used you to do this. You used to do that. You know what was great, dude? And what I loved, you would do it just for you out of nowhere. You just go. It used to make me laugh. No matter where we were, you go. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I fucking uh, love that. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> there's, there's, another, there's another hour of stories here that we cannot. Oh, my God. We can't even go into about how funny. By the way, she she it was a legitimately me, funny person. It took me maybe five years. I still yearn. There's not too many people in your life. You can meet that when they touch your hand and say, come with me, you're going to see an adventure. I think I went over with her three nights, and I saw all I had to see. Oh, she was... She... I have a friend, Mike Batoli. He used to be married to my sister. When you went out with him, you don't know what you're going to see. Be prepared, and don't be in shock. She was that much fun. She just was irresponsible. That's, that was the whole thing. Fun was her number one priority. Getting high, all that stuff. Going to work, fibromyalgia. She was the first person I, ever to get fibromyalgia. I will tell you and, this, and though. Her name was Malia, so we used to call her fibromyalgia. Right to her face. Like, what's going on? She was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I, will I got fibromyalgia. I will tell you this, though. She, I love her. To, she I still could, miss her. She could rally. She could get in late, dude. And if the alarm went off... She would be like, tell me when I got 10 minutes. And I'd be like, you got 10 minutes. And she'd be like, bing, bang, boop. And she'd be out the fucking door. And I, I mean, I got it. She could get up and get to work. We didn't fuck around. No. I had no choice in those days. You want yeah. to snort coke, you got to pay the piper. <laughs> you want to snort coke, you got to pay the piper. Once you accepted that you could live off an hour of sleep, two nights, you do it. Yeah. You do it. You know, I, I just, there's a radio show I listen to on Sunday nights. It's, it's nothing for you guys. You guys just would not like it. I like it because if, if it, it's only good once a month. It's Studio 54 Radio. Yeah, I got it in the car. Do you Sunday nights, they do Mira. Myra does a podcast. Is, yeah. Bro, once a month, she gets a guest that'll blow your socks off. Like, like a real legit, not like the door guys or when they start talking about amazing <clears throat> and all that shit. No. Once in a while, once a month, they get a guest that's like a dentist. Like the most famous one I heard was his dentist. And his wife came on. They're like 100 now. And they were talking about going to Studio 54 and what their lifestyle was like. They went six nights a week. Oof. And they had kids. But there was Long Island. So the kids, you know, your mother lives in the house with you guys. Yeah. So your parents live on the first floor. And you live on the second floor. So they told the story. Six nights a week. Can you imagine going on six nights a week? You and your wife and leaving two kids at the house. Six nights a week. And he was a dentist. What yeah. saved them was they were both dentists. And they owned the dentist thing together. Yeah. And they just laid a story on you that you could not believe. Of they would wake up at, they would get home at 7 sleep till 10, put the kids to school, then come back, sleep from 8 to 11, get up, go to the dentist shop, be a dentist till 3, go home, take another nap, pick the kids up from school, help them with their homework, take them to all their events, go home, put them in the shower, and at 9 o'clock, they take a nap till 11 o'clock, 
At 11 o'clock, they get up, get dressed. Get the fuck And at midnight, they'd be at Studio 54 <laughs> till 6 in the morning, and they'd do that six nights a fucking week. You sit there and go, how the fuck does this happen? Malia could do that. There's people who could do that. Yeah. There's people. I did it. I did it from 83 to God knows. Yeah. So I stopped doing blow. I was doing yeah. it. Listen, you yeah. want to snort coke, that's fine. But no, you got to get up for a plane at five. Yep. And you got to make the plane or you got to make the car. You know how many times I woke up in that Moscow, Idaho, and the room was spinning? Uh, and the only thing that could get me going was that last blast of coke you have in the morning. So you brush your teeth and do that one blast of coke. That's a heart attack for most people. But just to straighten up to drive home from Moscow, Idaho. That drive home was terrible. That was five and a half uh, fucking hours. But always hung over. Always hung over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just fucking pure craziness. Before we wrap up, I got to ask you one thing. Mm -hmm. One of the funniest things ever, because nobody's really talked about this lately at all. Everybody's talking about this, and I don't think it's, well, it's really, nobody has the reason to talk about it. It doesn't matter to a lot of people. <clears throat> but you haven't said boo about it. Tom Brady. What the fuck just happened, guys? Did we miss it because of the coronavirus? Is Cam Newton now the new face? Yeah. Of the who, Patriots. What, don't clap, please, because now they'll be 0-19. <laughs> oh, if this guy's a fan of theirs, it's over. Is he please. a mush? Oh, the king. For he, betting, not for actual every, sports. For everything. How they won everything. seven Super Bowls. Everything. Everything. Six Super Bowls. One everything. Event. And you didn't bet one of them. Yeah, so I said, I said so that's what I'm bet. saying. That's right. He's a mush. He didn't bet one of them. No. Oh, you could give him a lock. <laughs> and he'll call you an hour and tell you he mushed it up. Yeah. I got two little locks I'm working on for this weekend in the yeah. UFC. And I won't even let him know. Do you ever just ask him who you like and just pick somebody, the other person? Oh, dog, if he gets up, I know it's going to be a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if he wakes up, it's going to be a bad fucking day. I gave him locks already, and he'll fuck him up. <laughs> he'll put him in a parlay or a three-time teaser or something mm -hmm. after I give him a lock. Just bet this. I put him in a parlay. I gave him a yard one time. I had him up. And he Vegas. left, and he left. He lost again. He got every, you don't he, leave when you're up. Then he became a professional gambler. That was a disaster. <laughs> Actually, he's the only guy. He got thrown out of South Point. What? He's banned for life out of How South Point. How did you Point. get thrown out of South Point? Because his buddy showed up passing out edibles like they were Willy Wonka. He, it was the first <laughs> time I took more than 1,000 milligrams of the stars. The, his, the, the guy who used to make the stars was literally pouring them into my hands. I go to give them to one church guy. Fucking the, a, a Navy SEAL reject was sitting there staring at me. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? A, a guy who took being a security guard way too seriously. Okay. He had the bulletproof vest, and he said, where are they? We have you on tape. Little did he know that I ate the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he walked me up to my room and wouldn't let me. I had to leave the hotel. I couldn't even stay in the parking you lot. <laughs> <laughs> if I go back to the South Point Hotel. Meanwhile, I'm not even allowed in Vegas by law. <laughs> I'm not even allowed in Vegas And by the best law. part is his, it was his birthday, too. <laughs> I'm supposed to go to Vegas and check in with the police and let them know I'm there. <laughs> when I get to Vegas, by law, the first my first stop mm -hmm. is you got to check in with the police department. For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so what, what? What did you? Where did you go? Oh, it was the war. Where do you right. think he went? You think no. he would have waited like Dean Del Did Dean Delray? You give Dean Delray twenty bucks at nine thirty at night in Vegas yeah. and stay at the Palagio. He'll get a sweet something for 20 bucks. I don't know how Dean does it. You ever seen Dean in action? No. In New York? Dean would stay out all night till about 10. Till the hotel drops their prices on an app. And they let you go in there for like twelve ninety nine to. Come on. Bro, you have no idea. These fucking young motherfuckers got shit up their sleeve. Dean Delray would do spots and carry his clothes to spots. And then get like a Hotel 11, like... The Park Avenue Ritz for thirty nine ninety five. What's it called? What's the Hotel no Tonight? Shit. Hotels Tonight. You're not gonna get it like three in the afternoon. Right. You're gonna get it like twelve, eleven. And so, probably in every city there's a room yeah, somewhere. There's a room somewhere. 
Dean Delray has met. You don't know how many times he's called me? Like from fucking a hotel and there's horses in front of it and shit. <laughs> People getting horse carriages overlooking Central Park. I'm like, what'd you pay for that hotel? $89. It was a steal. <laughs> and it came with breakfast. I'm doing my laundry. This is great. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Got like a fucking sweet for eighty nine dollars. I'm gonna give that a run. Yeah, he's got like yeah. What the fuck? If you're a comic, that's what you know. Yeah, I mean, if I Look, especially because I can fly in day. late, go straight to the club. Yeah, that way I don't have to get up early. Yeah, it's actually not a terrible idea. Bro, Dean Delray came in here the other day. I got him fish. He wanted to eat fish. He goes, "Where do I get fish in the valley?" He goes, I'm up here. I go, I'll meet you. I'm in the same mood for the same fish. Let's go up to Big Tony's over there on cold water. On Fridays, they got great salmon. Fucking tremendous Mexican salmon. I said, well, I'll meet you up at Big Tony's. They don't let you eat in there. So we just took it to go, and we sat here and ate and talked shit. And I go, all right, so where you, you going back to where you live? And he goes, no. I live down the block from you. He just moved to Studio City. He scored a two-bedroom, two-bath, Corona two-car price. garage. Corona price. He's been watching it for a year. He goes, man, I've been watching this place for two years. <laughs> I love this place. Good for him, I man. I think he went, they went from, hey, you don't even want to know how much they dropped. And he worked them. He beat them. Oh, I, I be, I guess what he, he told me? What, guess what he told me? Huh. On Sunday, he said, man. No wonder they gave it to me for this price. I just saw two people moving out. Because this place is it's empty and all. Oh, go up to Victory and Lancashire and look at the U-Haul place. There ain't a fucking... You can't even find the fucking... Cart. A go-kart. You can't even push a go-kart. <laughs> there are people go-karting out of here. God. Go up there. Go see. How many moving trucks did you see? I see a three four day. In that one neighborhood. Yeah, it's bad. People, you, you can't afford to live here. And, no, no, no. That's you know the new rumor is people in the industry are getting the fuck out of here. They're going close to North Carolina and Atlanta because, believe it or not, homeboy Tyler Perry, his system's been working. His system's the only system that's been working. Yeah. All these other TV shows have had to cancel. They can't figure out. Check your SAG emails from now on. Check them. They go into your junk email. Yeah. Start reading them. You're going to die. They're canceling shit every day. Shit starting on Monday. But it shuts down by Wednesday. Shuts down. Can't even keep it open. So the move to North Carolina is just people starting saying, smaller studios. They're saying that this ain't going to work here. It's just not going to work. It's just not going to work just not going to work. It's too restrictive and too expensive. But Tyler Perry's paying all the loot, too. Tyler Perry's paying you for 30 days. Yeah. It's costing you 30 days' work. Yep. It's 16 days before the shoot is your first COVID test. You're on the clock. And they pay you for that, They right? pay you. Yep. And then at the plane at Van Nuys Airport, you get tested again. When you land, you get tested again. Then you get put in seclusion. You get tested again. Then you get put into an area. And you stay in that area until, you know, you shoot and you just hang with those people who are actors and first team. And even that gets cut into three. So you really have access to like six people. Unless you go to the set. You get tested every other day. So you get tested Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I guess makeup and everybody else. And everybody's staying in a hotel? Everybody's staying in a bubble. But like, (laughs) right, but like, where is everyone sleeping? Everybody's staying in like a hotel slash studio. Got it. And he built like malls in there. Like there's a mall you go to. Everything you need is there. You're not allowed to leave for two weeks. Jesus. No leaving. That's why I don't know what's going to happen like so you're telling me Zion Williamson, the rookie of the year, is not going to go get his dick sucked? Well. You t- you're trying to tell me NBA players are going to stay in a bubble 
from July, from next week till the champ. When is the championship? I have no idea. November. That's what you're trying to tell me? They're going to stay in a bubble. Good luck. Good luck. That's never going to happen. I don't think there's any chance everybody stays in the bubble. We're, 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 we're raised to sneak out at night. Yeah. We're raised to put a dummy in the bed. I'll put a tape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll put a tape recorder. I'll just tape myself coughing <coughs> and just play it. Every 20 minutes, the thing goes, <coughs> oh, he's in there. You know, we got the ropes. My favorite move of yours of all time, by the way, because I had never seen it before, and you can't do it anymore, but I did it a couple times myself when times were rough there, was going into the department store, picking up a couple of comforters, walking up to the counter and saying, I'd like to return these. And they'd be like, great. And you're like, we can't give you cash, but I'll take store credit. And you were like, fine. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. something here I can find for yeah. buck sixty. That was always my absolute. I was like, wait. And they just give it to you. And you're like, yeah, they won't give you cash because you don't have a receipt. From the, That was my open micer. That was the uh, hustle. You know, everybody has like, you got a developmental deal. That was my developmental deal was I just figured out when I left New York in October of 93 and I went to back to Boulder, I'm like, how am I going to make a living? I could sell cars, but the debt I was in was so overwhelming. The debt was just coming in by the thousands. I had an attorney. When you have an attorney oh, on the right. clock, you're dropping four a fucking week. I would drop off too. And the guy's like, oh, by the way, here's your next bill. You know, copies, what it was, fucking. He would charge me for everything. Right. Phone calls were two fifty a phone call. Uh, you know, I mean, it was a nightmare. So I couldn't make a fucking living. So everything I made got taken from me. And I don't even know how I. I think I was somewhere one day. I bought something, and I returned two things. And I'm like, come on. And it was the old Boulder Mall. They had a made DNF. I would go in there and pick up $249 comforters. <laughs> yeah, that, the comforter was and the move. Bring them back. And like, <laughs> what do you? And then I figured out, oh, shit. So I avoided the places that gave you checks. If people, or store credit. I avoided them unless I needed a suit or something. Then I took the store credit. But there were people who just straight up gave you cash. And I got to be honest with you. I got, you want me to lie to you? I can lie to you. From 93 October to June of 95, and even farther than that, because I was doing it on the road. I was doing it on triple runs. That's good I got move. caught one time in Idaho on a triple run. Returning some? Returning some. Oh, yeah. They let me go, but I fucking made a stink. Minority, <laughs> Idaho, <laughs> fucking O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I'm like, out of all the places that figured me out, Idaho. Somebody was just watching you? They caught me from the beginning. As soon as I went in and took it, they were watching me. I don't know. I was like a poor. I, bro, the more spaghetti you throw against the wall, yeah. it's going to stick. Yeah. So I was getting cocky. Like, I was walking into a place at 930. Ah, wrong move. You're going to get nailed. There's nobody in the store. You got to wait till there's 100 people in the store. And you walk in there, you just mix right in. But I still, let me tell you how fucking desperate I was. Because I don't, there's no reason for me to lie. There was a time to pay rent, like rent week. I would just hang outside. There was a pay phone in Kmart and Boulder. And I would just make believe I was paying calls. And I would watch people throw away receipts. Mm-hmm. You know what an ambulance chaser is? Mm-hmm. I was an ambulance chaser thief receipt. So people that come out of a store, throw away the receipt. Four out of ten people. Yeah. I mean, a couple white people take home their receipts. Remember, you couldn't get your fucking luggage back? You your receipts? <laughs> yeah. Nobody saves their receipts. Yeah. You know how many times I stood there and saw people come out like with a fucking... That is what I do with the receipt. Rotating something, and I see them throw away the receipt. And I pick up the receipt. Now I got you. Now I got you. I'd walk in like fucking... Whistle while you work. <laughs> Hitler is a jerk. You know, I just walk in now, pick up the thing, and fucking walk up to the counter with the receipt. How you doing? I don't want this. You just bought it 10 minutes ago. 
Yeah, I just don't want it. I don't need it. <laughs> don't, right? You just bought this. Ten I, I tell you what time it came up. You have no fucking idea. Uh, <laughs> Kmart was the spot, and Kmart knew I was robbing them. In Boulder, I lived right across the street from it, so it was my the go spot. So when Kmart would get too hot, then I would start going to the mall. And it was like May DNF Radio Shack. I put them out of business. <laughs> I remember going into a radio shack in Boulder in 85. They had a CD player on the wall. I looked around. The salesman wouldn't talk to me. I was like, fuck it. I just unplugged it, <laughs> put the cord around it, and I walked out of the store. You have no idea. You have no... I wish I was lying to you. When I walked out of that mall, I'm like, my friends at home would not believe this. I just unplugged it. They were playing like Superman or something. I unplugged it. I took the valves off. I just walked out with the whole fucking apparatus. That's when I went crazy. Like, I'm like, I got, I remember R Rogan going to me. He goes, I drove into Boulder and I could tell this place was like one huge candy store. It became one huge candy. They couldn't figure me out. I'm not proud That's of these crazy. things. That's why I don't go to Boulder. Because I totally disrespected Boulder. Like, totally. Like, just, I turned the, I, I, you know what my rent was in Boulder? 400 you know how I paid my rent September of 94? Hmm. I was waiting outside of the Kmart on the phone. It was rent day. It was the 31st of fucking August, guys. And I'm like, I've been waiting out there for like an hour and a half. Nobody's throwing a receipt away. I was just about ready to hang my hat down and get the fuck out of there. Because then I, had, I used to have plans. Like plan A is Kmart. Plan B is I robbed this guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a big jump, man. <laughs> oh, this is a good fun. <laughs> if you can smell a fart with a mask on, you did a good job. You know what I'm saying? Doug, I still remember needing 400 for the rent. This is unbelievable. And I'm waiting there. By the payphone, there was like three payphones. That was the same payphone I used when I turned myself in. I hung on on that. I knew it. the ins and outs. It was across the street from a Coco's restaurant in front of an Albertsons. I knew the whole layout. And two, six years earlier, I was on that same payphone torturing the cops because they couldn't put a tracer on me. So I kept calling the cops going, I want to talk to Detective Josh Wolf. And they're like, Who's calling? I'm like, Jose Diaz. Like, hold on. Click. I'd hang up. <laughs> Where's Josh Wolf? Who's this? Joe Diaz. Don't put me on hold. We're going to have to put you on hold. Click. Don't hang up. I would keep hanging up on him. And then finally they go, Joe Diaz, hold on. We'll put you on with Detective Cola. And he's like, where are you? I'll never forget this. Being on the phone with him at Kmart and looking at Coco's and Albertsons and going, I'm at the Albertsons on 28th Street. If you want to talk to me, he's like, we'll be right there. Just two of us, promise, we'll be right there. And I remember hanging up the phone and walking to my car and taking a newspaper and rolling the joint and watching the Albertsons and watching cop cars pull up from all fucking directions and them running in with their guns at the Albertsons and me going, ooh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm in fucking trouble. I had gone into town to get lethal weapon and above the law the video store and I go you know what my buddy George I met him and at the Kmart he goes the cops are looking for you they came by the dealership he left his card if you want to call him I'm like I don't want to fucking call this guy and I thought about it I should call him and see what it was but that was the exact same payphone where I called the cops and was toying with them I'm like I'll be at the Albertsons I'll see you there wait 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 what are you driving click <laughs> And I, within damn. minutes, I just saw cops pulling up from all directions into the Albertsons, running in. <clears throat> so I need $400 to pay the rent. I'm standing on that payphone, and I'm staring at that Coco's, and I'm like, I'm about to fucking go home. And guess what? I see some fucking rednecky looking guy pushing the hand carts. Yeah. And he's pushing a, a lawnmower, <laughs> one of those ones that you sit on. Yeah. And... All of a sudden, you just saw a receipt fly up in the air. It was like God. It was like fucking heavenly justice. It just flew out from under the thing. 
I thought the guy was going to see it. I thought the guy that bought it was going to see it. Nobody saw nothing. I thought the lady, because all those white people in Boulder, you know, you litter. They'll fucking have a cow. Pick that up, please. There was a couple women. Nobody said nothing. It was my lottery ticket. And I went over and I picked it up. Ooh, tremendous. I love it. Throw some to Lee. Lee wants some. Give some kosher to Lee. There you go. <laughs> So I go over, I pick this fucking receipt up. Guess how much it was for? I don't know, I have any idea. Four hundred fucking dollars mm. for my rent. It was perfect. It was four hundred and something dollars. I'm like, I made fucking rent. But when I go into Kmart, they're sold out of those low mowers. <laughs> I'm like, fucking bitch. You think that stopped me? Fuck no. I got in that car and did 90 to Longmont. There was another Kmart in Longmont. No internet, no nothing. I just knew there was one in Longmont. I went all the way to Longmont, got there 20 minutes later, walked in, walked into the you know the garden department where yeah. they have all the trees, and there was three of them. I had like $3 in my pocket. I got one of the guys to go, come here for a second. Load that up. Throw me, please. Here's $3. In those days, $3 was like a 10. Yeah. The guy picked up the lawnmower like Hercules, put it on, and he goes, do you want to pay for this? And I go, yeah, push it over to the thing. He actually pushed up to the counter. I gave the lady the receipt in front of him. He's like looking at me like, oh. <laughs> and the lady gives me back 400 plus tax. She gives me like 440. I'm like, what? Give him a 20. What? I got lunch and I got my rent money. <laughs> That's how deep and dirty I was. Yeah. Like, I was just chasing receipts. Some people are ambulance chasers. I would just sit there and chase receipts. And then the fucking coffee craze started. The espresso yeah. with the mochaccino machine and the coffee, they were four fifty a piece. I was clipping three of those a day. And I would go to different locations In every Boulder. day. No. Oh, please wait to come retarded. I had different Aurora... I had all the towns where they did the shooting at the movie theater. Yeah. I knew exactly where that movie theater was. That mall was down the corner from that movie theater. I used to go there all the time. So every day I had a different itinerary. Monday would be bolder if I was desperate. But Sunday, I would really go out. Sunday and Saturday were my big days. I had coverage. They're my big money days. I remember I got so high one night. I went to the comedy works. I had just started comedy. been doing comedy for two years but i wasn't in with them yet so i went to see jackie flynn uh-huh and i took a date and they made me pay i had 1800 dollars in my pocket from stealing that day i was so high i took the money out paid them and i put the 1800 on the counter and walked away and when mm. i got the drinks i went back to get the money and the 1800 was missing and nobody knew where it was the girl i was with had to pay for the drinks i go i'll pay you in the morning I just went and robbed another 18. It was just four machines. It was four machines because you would get 450 plus tax. You got like 500 bucks. That's crazy. So every day I would go to a different local. That was my open mic. That's what I did as an open micer. That's how I financed my life as an open micer. That whole summer was just bringing shit back. Every day. Toys R Us. Oh. <laughs> oh I made a mockery out of that. They, they give they you give, cash? No. They give you uh, Store credit? Jeffrey Bucks. money. Oh, Jeffrey Bucks. I had 10,000 Jeffrey <laughs> Bucks. I went in there one day and brought back a computer and left there with a bicycle. Christmas in 94, everything my daughter got was on one run. And I mean everything. Computer, bicycle, Barbie's yeah. doll houses. I would go in there and just, I would start with like a little thing. It was, you know, these are just things that happen. This is how you put put it together when you're a comic. This is how, the only way I knew how, to, I wasn't going to get no fucking job. There was no way I was getting a job when I was two years in. I had already done all that shit. By 94, there was no way. I tried to get a job. I would get jobs at different car lots just for the advance. I would tell them I could speak Spanish and I could sell 15 cars a month, call anybody in town. But I need a car, and I need a nickel. 
up front. They'd give me a car, and that's how I go to the gigs. Judy Brown, I still remember going to one of Judy Brown's gigs, and the car blew up, and I just left it there. I just uh, took like a bus into town and left the car. The dealers would call me three days later. Where's our car? <laughs> it's in fucking Vail. What the fuck is it doing up in Vail? Bro, I was killing dealerships. Killing dealerships. <laughs> killing dealerships. There's a guy that's still my friend that lives in Pismo Beach. And we and him got into a conversation about this about a year ago. He goes, when you worked with me at that Jeep store, you were a nightmare. What the fuck were you doing? I was just taking a car at night. Like, whatever <laughs> I wanted, I would just take a new car. And then I went to work for used car dealers. After the new cars wouldn't hire me no more as an open mic, because I could speak Spanish. So they had to put me. I'd go in there and put them together. Listen, do me a favor. Give me 15 up front. Give me a car. And I'll even shoot the commercials for you. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos, Toyota. So, I think I shot one commercial for one of those guys. They had the whole camera crew out there. Llama ahora, Jose Diaz. 303 So people would come down there looking for me from Telemundo. I never lasted. I never lasted. I never. I quit all the time. I quit every fucking job. Oh my! God. I would just go take the job just to have it. Then one day I took a car from a used car dealership. I knew the girl. I had had an affair with the girl, and she called me up one day. She's like, "Joey, these guys don't pay you anything to come work up here. They're looking for a Spanish guy." That was my last car job business. I go. Her name is Lori. I go. Put them together. Get me twenty five hundred in demo. She goes. I'll call you back in a little while. She called me back. She goes. They'll give you twenty five hundred in demo. You got to work ding to ding. That means all day, four days straight, and two days off, or whatever. I go, all right. I went there. They go, pick a car. The first fucking car. That's when I was mush. See, he doesn't understand that I could call him mush because I used to be mush. At that time, yeah. everything I touched turned to shit. Every car, everything I touched, whatever I touched blew up. If I bet. Bro, if I bet a team, even if the other team didn't show up, I'd find a way to lose. <laughs> it was terrible. I know mush. I know mush because I live mush. So I had a, I had a gig in like fucking Wyoming. You can't write this shit. There's like a foot of snow coming down, so I didn't want the snow to settle. So I left after the gig. At this time, I'm doing 35, 40. Like I'm, what car did you take? One of their cars oh. off the used car lot. Yeah. We're driving back and I hear like boom boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in Greeley. And I hear like boom boom boom. Something's wrong with the car. And I'm like, man, this is getting hot. <laughs> I'm by myself. I'm like, man, this is getting hot in this car. And all of a sudden I'm smelling like fire. I'm like, come on. And sure enough, I pull over, bro. And something was on fire under the hood. <laughs> I just took my suitcase. <laughs> I started walking. And within 10 minutes, I hear like, boom, something. And you can see like the flames in the car. I just walked away from it. That's the second time that happened to me in my life. Where a car I was driving. <laughs> just lit in flames. You know, people think like I call them, you know, I lived it. Tell them about the car I had in Seattle. Tell them about the car I had. No. Yeah. The car I had in Seattle when I first moved to Seattle, the last month I had that car, I was driving it without, not a bumper, but what's the side panel? The uh, That covered the wheels. Yeah. Yeah, without the. It was off. That was my. I, yeah. The, I paid $800 for that car. That was the best car I ever had in my life. Why do I know? Because I put that car through commando tactics. I drove from Denver to Baltimore in that car easy 15 times. Do you still drive the way you used to drive? Yes. What do you mean? Just like you, be, you used to beat the shit out of your cars. Um, yes and no. I'm a horrible person with cars because, and that's why I don't buy a Cadillac. Yeah. That's why. That's why I won't buy a BMW. 
because I've lit cars on fire. Nobody, but nobody, has had worse luck with cars than Uncle Joey. I was the original mush. I still remember being 18 and delivering electronical parts and shit uh-huh. for a company. And I went somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be. And the guy would always say to me, how come it always takes you longer than everybody else? And I would always have some story. Do you know that one day in 1983, in the snow in Jersey, I was making a delivery for this fucking guy? This could only happen to me. This electrical poles, and there's like little wires that are on the bottom. Yeah. So this is the pole, and there's usually like these steel beams. One day I was going in reverse in the snow, and the back of the wheel well caught that beam. And I'm up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking gorilla, guys. I'm not built for that shit. I'm like, uh, finally I'm like, fuck. And I get out of the car and I go, look, I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, how can this happen to me? And at that time, there was like a, he had like a thing, like a CB. And he's like, Diaz, Diaz. He's like, Diaz, Diaz, come in, come in. Where are you? And I'm like, I'll be right there. I'm two blocks away. And I'm looking at this thing. It's on 89th Street in North Bergen. It's like a side street behind. I used to live in that rocket ship in that park. It was right there. It was on the corner there. And I went to visit a friend, and I went up that hill for some fucking reason. And something happened, and I went to back up, and I got caught on that thing. And you know me. I'm like, how am I going to get out of this? <laughs> I'm like, fuck <laughs> this. I get back in the fucking car. And I just start, I got the car, and I'm like, fucking to drive two. Like in those days, they had drive two, <laughs> drive one. I had that motherfucking two. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I put, I'm like, fuck. So I had to go across the street. I took a bucket, and I got sand from the playground. Yeah. I, this is how crazy I was. Like, I pushed the fucking snow. I got sand from the playground. I'm walking back. The car's still on. And you hear, Diaz, Diaz, come in. Come in. I'm like, go fuck yourself. I put the fucking sand on the snow. I swear to God, dog. I'm hey, pushed. You know where you were mushed? You remember when we were catering and you lit those trash cans on fire? <laughs> Dog, I lit more things And you were fire. like, go, 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 go. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Go. I'm not sitting around cleaning shit. So, Josh Wolf, I'm stepping on this thing and I'm, oh. I'm like, Arr, Arr. and the car, and also I'm looking behind, there's like little flames coming out of the tires. Yeah. And shit. <laughs> it's like sparks. And all of a sudden, you just hear, the thing started, the metal started moving, and the electrical pole started going back and forth. I'm like, this motherfucker's going to go. I got to get out of here. So I put it on like D1. I'm like, ah, and all of a sudden, you're like, the thing is going to fall. It's going to fall. It's going to fall. Dog, I drove so hard. The back of the van came off, and I just said, fuck it, leave it. And Diaz, where are you? Diaz, where are you? I'm, done. I'm coming back. I pull up like nothing. He's out there waiting for me with a new delivery. The back of the van is gone. I'm, I'm wide open. I'm freezing to death because there's no doors. It just took that whole piece off with the bumper and the tire oh thing. God. The whole thing came off. I remember pulling up. And he's a little Arab guy. His name, what the fuck was his name? And we used to torture him. He's still there. God, he's damn. still there at Boulevard Hardware. He's still there. George something. And he was Arab. And we used to, and the, the kid who got me the job there, the father worked there, Bubba, Babu, Buba, something like that. And he had a sister who was a, a half a freak. And his name was George something. His name was George Murad. So we used to call him George Murad in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> he was a coke fiend. He loses his mind. A couple times I'd bring him coke and he'd go crazy. He'd leave in the afternoon. You run the place for me. I think I lasted three months there. And even with the torn van, you know how I got? That's how I took my first pinch when I was working at Boulevard Hardware. 
He didn't I, fire you after the van? No, I blame them. You know me, though. Yeah. I could talk anybody into anything. I talked them into like, what are you talking about? The back of the van. Where is it? They said, that was my favorite van. <laughs> you told me to go to Newark. <laughs> I don't know what happened. He goes, Newark? When did you go to Newark? I'm like, last week, remember? I never went to Newark in that fucking thing. I would never go to fucking Newark. That happened to me, no, bro, the whole back of the van. Oh, my God. I went back there that night. I just took the back. Me and my buddies, like, took it and pushed it onto the people's property. Like, the people, they must have flipped when they woke up and saw the back of the van. It was one of those vans, like, that you fucking actually rape people in. Like, it had the bed in the back. You mean he was no a, windows? And all yeah, that? he yeah, was yeah, a yeah. filthy fucking savage. No, yeah. but it was customized. Oh, like. It was like an extra van he had because he was so busy with deliveries, delivering wood and nails and all this shit. So he's like, you're going to have to drive that van. So I used to fucking steal shit from him. Like, when I, bro, I, he used to have those Makita dr drills, Makita saws yeah. and shit. And I would steal them every delivery. Like, he would go stock this job. So I would take a piece of paper down, and there'd be like a pallet. And if it called for two, two Makitas, I'd put six on there. And I would take them right to my little junkie buddy, Bonehead, and he'd buy them for me. Give me a kick, come by the house later, I'll take care of you. Man. Yeah, hilarious. I, I wonder if you added up all the shit you've stolen in your life, oh, how, much, how much that would be. It's crazy. And at that time... Did you say millions? Between the Coke, yeah. Between the Coke, yeah. Yeah. Easy. That's crazy. Easy. Yeah, that was like from October. I worked for him like from November to January. That's when I took my first pinch. January 21st, 1983. I took my first pinch and Mr. Holloway bailed me out. <laughs> my friend's dad bailed me out. The kid I was telling you about from oh, yeah, 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 4th yeah. of July yeah. and shit. Yeah, so it's a small world. That's crazy. He had to yeah. come bail me out and fucking, uh, why the fuck did I get arrested? Richfield Park. And I didn't go to court. Like I just went to whatever. I was supposed to do something, so they put a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> I got arrested like five years later in Tenafly, and they had to bring me back to that place to answer for not fucking, fucking hysterical Josh Wolf. You can't even repeat. I forgot all about the van story Dude. with George Murad and the fucking van. You have no idea how many cars I blew up. Blew up. What That's about, why I don't about buy cars. Poor Ann Maney. Oh, that poor car. How many, how many tickets do you think? Real, like, just, just let me tell you something. Let me tell you my side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to practice. All right? And I'm not being, and I never used this term before, but it's going to make sense to you guys. First all right. of all, how does L.A. welcome you? Buy a ticket. You don't really know what L.A. is till you park wrong in L.A. and get a ticket. $75. There's, there's nothing worse than L.A. If you come to L.A. and move here, trust me, the first week you'll get a ticket. Yeah. They have the it's something weird down there that gives you a ticket. My first experience was they towed Doug Stanhope's car. Oh, yeah? I woke up with Doug Stanhope's car. I went out. I was at Ralphie's all night snorting coke and shit with fucking a bunch of people over there. There you go. And uh, I went outside, and the car was gone from sunset. And Stanhope was at some girl's house, so I had to go fucking get it out before Stanhope got home. Oh. That's when he had the red Hyundai. Yeah. He had yep. the red Hyundai, and then he had the car you could borrow. What street was he? Curson. He and lived on Curson. Mitch was on Alta. Sierra Bonita. Sierra Bonita, that's right. You were on Vista, yeah. and, and Ralphie and those guys were on Garden. Were, were, you, were you with us at Mitch's apartment when we when we were watching his first Letterman set? No. That was bananas. No. That little spot he had with his girl, his girlfriend at the time. At the time. And I remember his girlfriend was helping you, her manager. Yeah. She worked for a manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he had Barry Segundo. Look at that. Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? Some novice bitch? Oh, And he had, he had shit. Wendy Liebman. Barry Segundo. He had like three stars at the time. Barry Segundo. 
Yeah, when did when did he even make me laugh? If I ever have to fucking testify, people go to jail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people go to jail, man. I just remember stupid shit. Barry Segundo. That's crazy, Josh Wolf. Twenty five fucking years. Just so people know, we were doing this shit in Seattle twenty five years ago. Now they took that away from us. We don't have this no more. No. This is not going to come back for another six months, maybe. No. But you know what, though? I mean, look at you. You're still... You know what I mean? Like, there's still things to do. There's plenty of things. Yeah, there's still things to do. Listen, rule number one, there's a thousand hustles on that fucking computer. Okay? You know, uh, these guys that are panicking and going out. Look, at my heart goes out to Brendan Shaw and, and the other guy. I made a fucked up joke on Twitter, but those they both know I love them to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I called Brendan before this whole thing started, and I go, Brendan, don't go out there. Don't let nobody talk you into going out there. There's no reason to go out there right now. This was, this was when it was just COVID. This wasn't with all this social yeah. shit going on right now. Right now, it's horrible to go out. If you're going out, you got a 50-50 chance of coming back. That's scrape, scrape business. So I don't know if you know this. Vegas was going to open up comedy in yeah. August. But when DL fainted, they said that's it. So what's going to happen now that two or four comics actually got it? Who's, you know? And that was my point. Like, why would you go to a comedy show now? Everybody canceled everything. Right now, and, and in the midst of all the cities, the comedy clubs in question are Florida's comedy clubs, Texas comedy clubs, and Arizona. Yep. You don't want to be anywhere down there right now. You know, I, in my world, and, and I'm a druggie, I come from that culture, bars can't be open. Sorry. Sorry. They're done. Bars cannot be open because we have a hard time social distancing as humans. Yeah. Never mind that in alcohol. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Let me tell you something. Before this, if you know anything about me, I don't like sitting next to people. When I go to a restaurant, unless it's Dan Tanners or something like that, where you have to sit next to somebody, mm -hmm. you accept it, and they're on top of you, but you go there for the steak, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You go there, Ralphie takes you, somebody takes yeah, you there. Yeah, yeah. Remember, Ralphie took us. Yeah, I do to remember fucking, that. To, well, he didn't take us to that one. He took us to the one up the block for lunch. And do you remember? He had just gotten one of his surgeries. And he took us to the fucking, what was the one up the corner? Not Dantana's, but. It wasn't Dantana's, you no, sure? He took us. I, he took us to Dantana's one time. But there was one up the corner that you walked in, and they would give him the back room. In, in a big table. Yeah, it was a big table. They would give him the back room. You would walk in there. Do you, re home. you remember how much <clears throat> he had just gotten one of the surgeries? And you remember how much food he fucking ordered? We got. We went there for lunch. The tab was a nickel. Yeah. He was good. I'll like never that. forget looking at that bill going, <laughs> $500. <laughs> Five hundred dollars for yeah. fucking lunch. Yeah, and he was like, "There's no problem, Blair. I got this." And me and Josh looked at each other. Like, yeah, holy fuck! And if he didn't take you there, he would take you to the real, the other sushi spot, the one on Beverly. It cost fifty dollars just to walk in there. You talking about the one near La Cienega in Beverly? Yes. Yeah. Every time I went in there, he was he came to me one night. He's like, "Man, look at this," and he had a picture with Clint Eastwood. He bumped into. I was in there with him one day. He would walk in and go. They would, you know, they bang a drum. Yeah. And you walk in, they go, "Mama say," and he would go, "Must be the money." <laughs> <laughs> he would yell it. He would yell it. Must be the money. <laughs> and we'd sit in the back, and he'd start ordering fucking thirty dollar rolls, uh, and I'd be sitting there with four dollars in my pocket, yeah. going, "Fuck, Ralphie, just give me a hundred bucks. I don't need all this fucking sushi." And he'd fucking order sushi, and I'd be sitting there, the chick from the fucking, the chick from Rounders, yeah. that's now a big star. Every time I was in there with him, she would come in there to pick up sushi to go. She's in a big chain now. Ralphie was always good like that, though, man. Oh, he took us to every restaurant. Yeah, he, hit. he was good like when that. When he hit, bro, we were eating like kings. Yeah. Kings, Woo! kings. It was over. Yeah. He was 600 pounds, and he didn't give a fuck. And he did not like to eat alone. No. He did not want to eat alone. No. And he'd eat. 
And then he'd tell you, take it home to your wife. I ain't taking this shit home to my wife. Fuck her. I ain't taking this. My car's going to smell like fucking steak and lobster. <laughs> Fuck you. But we would go to Sushi Dan and cause damage. Yeah. He took me to that sushi spot next to the comedy store. You know there's a sushi spot next to the comedy store. That's in, another 50 to just to walk in. In the hotel? Right next to the comedy store, there's a sushi spot. Bro, they have these little steaks on a stick. Uh-huh. They start at 20. I had two millionaires take me there at one time. I've had two millionaires take me there, and they didn't even look at the bill. But they were too busy, so I kept ordering those steaks. <laughs> Do you understand me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't take me to that place. One guy took me as a beard there. One guy was a oh, friend shit. of mine, was a dear friend of mine. I haven't seen him in years. This is 10 years ago. And he calls me one day. He's like, hey, you hungry? I'm like, this had to be 15 years ago. This had to be before the longest yard. And he goes, you hungry? Because I had a big daddy warm-up suit on. They gave me a hard time. That's how high level that place is. And he goes, just meet me over there. I'm here waiting for you. When I got there, he was with a broad. And he was married. And I'm like, what's going on? He goes, this is this chick I'm fucking just play cool. So she sat next to me. And he sat next to me. So I sat in between them. Uh... So he's talking behind my back. And I got the Japs here. I'm like, you, come here. Keep bringing those steaks at 20 apiece. <laughs> And I was dipping them in that sashimi sauce, whatever, fucking whatever. It was, it is phenomenal. Where is it on Sunset? I mean, it's right next to the store. Right next to the store. It has the has the, has the fire outside. You walk upstairs. You've been there, right? Uh, I haven't been there, but the comics told me they have a good happy hour. I know exactly where you're talking. That place in there, it's a <sighs> yardstick. Just why to did walk I think in. that was a hotel? So I went there like I, in two, I went there like in 2003 with this millionaire. I was like, what? The sushi was fresh. They were killing fish over there. You could pick the fish out of a pond and shit. And then Ralphie yes. took me there one time. And Ralphie must have dropped 800. It was just me and him. <laughs> and the fucking <sighs> table was fucking packed with sushi. Yeah. Like, it was just, you can't even explain to people. Like, they wouldn't even understand. Like, people would go, that's unnormal. But before he hit, I remember driving to Jack in the Box with him. He was like, Josh Wolf, come on. I mean, he was getting Jack in the Box for people in the building, right? And um, he put two orders in. One was huge. And the other one was like a burger and fries. And I go, what's the small bag for? He goes, this is what, this is what I'm going to eat on the way to that apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh. Oh, he goes, yeah, my other food's in the bag. I was like, okay, okay. And he goes, will you open up the glove box? I go, yeah. My man had condiments. He had hot sauce. Yeah, hot sauce. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he had every Taco Bell yeah. sauce. The red one, the purple yeah, one, he had every, the they, yellow one. They fuck one. up a lot. I don't he, bro, he, he had, had every, every different yeah. color <laughs> sauce in there. He I was did. in that car a thousand yeah, times. Yeah. He was so heavy in that car, he fucked the shocks up. Yeah, I agree with that. The shocks were like this. He gave oh. that car away, and the car was sideways. But he would have, you think I'm fucking kidding you? He would, but here's the thing about Ralphie. Do you still remember him giving you a bag of candy to take home to oh, the yeah. kids? Yeah. Well, this is when he was broke. Yeah. When he was broke, he would still go, I remember him going, man, where's Josh Wolf at? He ain't coming to my house. I'm like, I don't know where Josh Wolf is at. And he's like, I bought his kids a bag of candies. And you know what? Like, my heart broke. He didn't have a hundred bucks to give your kids, mm -hmm. but he had candy for him. Yep. You know, that was the type of dude he was. You know, thinking about, I was thinking about the time we were at the pool. Yeah, he was a good dude. We were at the pool, and, and you asked me where the weed was hidden, <laughs> <laughs> and you spelled it out D R A W, and I was like, "What? <laughs> it's in the fucking drawer." I got that. that's not how you spell it, man. D R A W. It's yeah. <laughs> Are you, I made you say it twice. I go, what? You go, it's in the D-R-A-W. I'm like, what are you saying to me? Because I couldn't yell. Yeah. <laughs> then we're in Seattle and we move. I'm moving with you in Vista. 
How weird was that building? I mean, would, would people understand? No, the people that were that you could them? walk in that building. Would you please tell these people? What about the that le- you could walk in that building and get your dick sucked at four in the morning? No, no, it was crazy. Four in the morning, you get your dick sucked. What in that about building. the? You could have an orgy in that building at four in the morning. What about the lesbian couple that, that did heroin next to next us? To How us? hot were they? And and the white porno chick next wh- to her from Canada. <laughs> the 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 lesbian couple used to sell those steaks. What were those Omaha steaks? But they used to take heroin, so the steaks would go bad in their apartment. And it would fucking smell. Man, you have no for idea. Days. You have no idea what we saw in 97. There were, there were a couple of business. drug dealers in that building. There was two drug dealers, White Lightning. Mm-hmm. There was the Jew, White Lightning, mm-hmm. the Mexican kid. Yep. That's still around. He is? He's still around. He's still at the Rainbow. Come if on. You go to the Rainbow. He's out there with white hair. It's up to his ass now. Oh, get the fuck. You had the chick that white lightning sold drugs, but he didn't have the balls to hide it in his house. So he would hide in the garage, which I dipped into many a times. And he would also hide at the chick's house with no chin. Big tits. <laughs> yeah, I know she had big tits about. with no chin. Yeah. Tremendous tits. Like when you saw her at the pool. I know you're, you're like, look at those titties. But when she turned around, there was no chin. It'd take over here like this. Mm. You're like, how's she going to suck my dick with no chin? This is not good for people. You know what I'm saying? What's she going to do? Rub it with her elbows? What's she going to do here? But she was a dynamite person. She was great. She was a great person. And a lot of fun. She was a, she was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She that was a lot building fun. was a lot of fun. At four in the morning, you had more of a chance of getting your dick sucked and, that, and doing heroin and coke. At four in the morning, there, than you did by going out. It was bananas in that for for about a year, about a year. It was a crazy building to live in. It was fucking. <laughs> yeah. nuts. And I sounds think, like my nightmare. I still you hear guys out there at four in the morning. Like, no. What about that dude who lived right okay. below me with that giant, giant rock dog. wall? Giant. And you walked in. No, your brother walked, walked in, in there the, high one day by mistake. This Rottweiler was like, the third floor. oh my god! The, it was like, a, like a, on, on, you know those the pictures of the dogs in the uh, in magazines that look like they have actual muscles. Right. That one of those motherfuckers. Like he and he was training no. them to kill. Yeah. He was training them to kill. Yeah. And next to the two hot heroin lesbians was a chick who Gary Wolf went out. She was high. from Montreal. She was from Montreal. Well, what about the dude who killed the hooker with the sword? Who used to wear the fucking? Um, he he worked on uh, Star Trek, and so he had Klingon ma- uh, makeup. He was an extra, but he it was his dream to be on the show. So he used to wear that. He used to walk around in his robe, but he didn't take the fucking mask off, and he would be this Klingon in his robe walking. <laughs> People have no idea what Hollywood That is dude about. was fucking crazy. That building was <laughs> fucking crazy. The landlord yeah. was good people. Maria. Maria. She was great. Uh, the chick who ran the room, the belly room on With Monday a hot night. condition. I just saw her on Facebook. Uh, uh, Kathy Lewis. Kathy Lewis great. protesting. Yep. And she had an open mic. So she, she was always, always very nice to always us. Always very nice yeah. to us. That Hollywood building... Till this day, when I drive by it sometimes, just to get goosebumps. There's a parking spot where I used to take Ann Manny's car and I would do like a grandma blow. I remember one night we got some coke from somewhere and it was on fire. And I was at coaching horses with Fulton, yeah, Doug Stanhope, and I couldn't talk. The bar was packed and I couldn't talk. I was so fucked up on this coke. And I had like an eight ball of it. I'm like, what am I going to do? I've only done like five lines and I'm fucked up. And I remember I said, fuck it. I left. It. I said, I'll be right back. I pulled one of those moves. I was so fucked up on coke. And it was 11 o'clock and I couldn't even talk. And I went across the street to that liquor store. They just closed because they're going to knock the whole block down. It was next to Curse on. Mm-hmm. Right to 7-Eleven. I went to that liquor store. I bought a six pack. And I walked to Vista. And I walked into Man Maney's car. And I still remember pulling the seat back and doing little lines, people walking their dogs, people walking past me from El Compadre. Oh, yeah. And I was laid in the seat back, and I would do lines. And I still remember being like 3 in the morning, and me putting like a jacket on, 
and lowering the sunroof. I had a sunroof, and I would just jerk off, little jerks. So if somebody came by, they wouldn't see me jerking my dick. That, that dog, you can't write this shit. Oh right there on Vista, God. I would jerk off because it got to the point that I couldn't go upstairs and be coked up because Malia would jump on me with that coke. I had to give her half. <laughs> So I'm not giving nobody half of this shit. <laughs> there was some nights I'd give Malia half, and there was some nights the shit was just too good. I ain't giving them half. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on tonight. You're 25, the best, 25 fucking years. years. That's how I fast I still can't it went. believe that. I'm doing comedy 29 years in two weeks, maybe. On the 18th, it's 29 fucking years. I couldn't stick with nothing for two minutes. Yeah, but listen, man, I, I would tell you that anybody who's seen you before this all went down and saw you at the store, like every bit of work you've put in shows. Oh, no. that's I told you it was weird. This last year before this happened, I would find myself on stage and get them laughing. And I would go, I would think about while I was on stage telling the jokes. I would thank myself for putting in the work like, oh, I remember where I learned this. I learned this at, what was that casino, that triple one? Elko. Yeah. Elko, Nevada was a horror show. Elko, like I learned this at the underground. You know, when I think about comedy, I think a lot about Seattle. Like I give the comedy store a lot of love, but I give. Me too. Carl. Yeah. And Ron and that whole scene, you know. They gave us so much freedom. Brody, you know, we had, yeah. you know, and that's why when people say to me, well, I'm thinking of starting comedy in L.A. That's great. But I'll tell you what, you're not going to get out of it what you get out of it in a regular comedy community. Because we were not worried about headshots then. Nobody talked about headshots. We didn't talk about a, a DVD. Stand up. We didn't talk about specials. We didn't talk about agents. We didn't talk about managers. And that's a very special thing. When you're just doing stand up and it's fun. Monday nights, how much fun you lived how much money did you make on Monday? You didn't make a dime. No. You went down there because you were gonna eat for free, you were gonna drink for free, and you were gonna laugh your ass off. Because we had eighteen comics who go up every Monday and Tuesday. Ten of them would be legit comics. Yeah. The other eight But funny were guys that were gonna pull the trigger on themselves. Or somebody else any day. And today, you look back, a lot of those guys iced himself. The guy who's come out with the handcuff on. He did? Yeah, a little. He was always a weirdo. He was always like, don't act like, I forget what his name is, God rest his soul. Yeah, I didn't know, but I mean, he I'm flo- not surprised. I'm this not- guy used to come up on stage with yeah. the handcuff on. The tuxedo, like a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. There was yeah. a lot. There was one guy that had a joke up there. I remember one night I walked in there high as fuck. I think you you know who it is. You, I forget his name. Good kid. I think they used to, you mentioned his name before. And I sat down kind of high, and I'm watching this guy headline. And he goes, so he was talking about a, a, a rodeo clown, Joe. Joe Paragamo. Joe Paragamo. And then he goes, the other day, we were walking past the store. Me and my son were walking past the animal store, and my son saw a hamster. Dad, what do you prefer, a rat or a hamster? And he goes, me? I prefer a finger. <laughs> yeah. You remember that? <laughs> that was Joe Vespasiani. Joe Vespasiani. First time I heard that joke. I remember me? that I joke. I prefer the finger. Yeah. I fucking fell the fuck yeah. back. You know, all oh those little things. Oh, my God, I remember I, that. Bro, dude. you remember all yeah. those jokes. That he was a great you. writer. He was a phenomenal. He was talking about the rodeo clown. Mm-hmm. Something with a rodeo clown. That I was on a roll on, and then he went into the fucking animal thing. Son, what do you prefer? Boom, boom, boom. But all those years of watching, we're both here. And Brody is watching this podcast right now. Yeah, going, man. You motherfuckers, stop saying the gig harbor story. I don't live my life that way. I don't way. live my life that way. It didn't happen that way. <laughs> he kidnapped me. He should be in jail yeah. right now. I just forgave him. I forgave him because he was good to me. Because uh... I saw him. Then he came to. Then he came back. You know, I was in... All right, so we moved to L.A. Brody was in New York. Yeah. And I'm at coaching horses one night, and Brody walks in. 
So I'm with a girl and her girlfriend. And we start talking. And also it's 3 o'clock. Brody don't do drugs. I think Brody smoked pot. Yeah. But he didn't snort coke. No. So I'm snorting coke with the two broads. And Brody's making the one broad laugh. So we go, fuck it. Let's go. Brody, you coming with us? And Brody's like, what are you talking about? And I go, you're driving. And he goes, I'm not driving. I go, you're fucking driving, bitch. Let's get in the car. We got in the car. He's got the cassette in. Yeah. For Super Unknown. <laughs> we get to the fucking building where I lived. I lived on Hollywood on the corner with all the Russians. Oh, yeah. The, corner. the girl lived in the building next to me. And the other girl lived in the building. We ended up in the girl's apartment. And then I left with the one girl, and I left Brody with the chubby blonde. But I stole the cassette to Super Unknown. As we were getting out of the car, I pushed the jet. <laughs> and I left. And two nights later, I see him at the store, and he's like, can I ask you a question? He goes, do you know what happened to my Super Unknown cassette? And I go, I got it at my house. <laughs> You know, you really suck. You know that? Yeah, he must Why have would you steal a CD? Why would you take a cassette from my car? <laughs> Brody, because I love you. I didn't have to tell you anything. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I just love that album. Oh, Where are you going to be in the next few weeks? Are you home? I'm home, man. I'm home. That's I'm home. it. I just check out the YouTube channel. My special's on there for free. You're beautiful. You're the best. I'm happy, man. You came out 25 love you, buddy. fucking Thank years. Thank you so much. Before we get out of here real quick. Thank you, Lee. You're all right, cocksucker. You're finally not high no more. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You yeah, took you a couple of those farts, brought you back. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. what happens when you sniff farts? It's good for you. The church is also brought to you by one of my favorites, Zip Recruiter. During this time of change, we want you to know that Zip Recruiter's focus has not changed. They're still doing what they've always done, helping people find work, and they're helping businesses find the right people for the job. If you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter is working with you to find the right job faster. They're dedicated to helping you get hired. From caretaking to delivering food to goods to building medical facilities, supplying protective equipment, and so much more. In fact, ZipRecruiter app will send you up-to-date job openings so you can be one of the first to apply. And if you're actively hiring, ZipRecruiter will invite candidates to apply to your most urgent roles, making it faster and easier to reach the people you need. By connecting people who need jobs and companies that need people. It's that easy. ZipRecruiter is working with all of us so we can keep moving forward. You're looking for a job? You're looking to hire the best quality candidate out there? Go to ZipRecruiter.com, all right? Let's work together. So go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work together right now. ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. I want to thank Josh Wolf. I want to thank the what's that? Spotify. Oh, I want to thank don't forget to watch us on Spotify. I want to thank Josh Wolf. I want to thank the Christ Killer. But I want to thank you guys for always having our fucking back. It's a beautiful day to be alive. There's a lot of shit you could be doing, but you're listening to us, cocksuckers. Thank you very much for tuning in. Lee. Kick this fucking meal, will you?